Welcome to episode one of the Adam and Wack show, the Adam and Wack podcast, yeah, whatever you want to call it. As my man unravels his white boy headphones. See, all right, this is what's interesting about this is I think on this podcast we are fully capable of coming in here and just talking about current events, what's going on in the culture, etc. But is that you? No, that ain't me. That's about the loudest ding I ever heard in my life. It wasn't me. Um, (laughs) But it turns out it's like it's there's always so much going on in the WAC 100 universe. There's always so many universe. Yeah, there's all these topics Uh, that like like Remo made me a list of some topics. It's a lot of WAC 100 (laughs) did this. WAC 100 said this. You know, I just came from Vietnam and Hong Kong, right? I know you're doing diaper business, huh? Yeah, but I went to tunnels. You went from Paru business to diaper business. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could do both, right? Listen, man, either you're going to be stuck in the first book, third chapter, or you're going to write many books. Mm-hmm. So this is why I understand when I catch the backlash from um, the so-called streets mm-hmm. when I do certain shit. Well, answer me this. What, that, what unique value do you bring to the diaper game that is not being represented by other people? Um... I got a better diaper, a thinner diaper, a more absorbent diaper for less cost. Meaning, most people are using, let's say, overnight, they're using like two to three diapers throughout the night, right? From, you know, from the infants on up. The older they get, they get better at it. What if they're shitting it? Right. Or shit is shit. Right. But my absorbance, you're not going to have it gushing out and going out because the way I got the tab set up, the elastic around the legs. But... When your person's using like 10 diapers, right, or uh-huh. three diapers a night, let's just do the three. Three times 30, that's 90 diapers. Uh-huh. Just overnight. Exclude during the day, right? Uh-huh. 90 using, diapers a month. Yeah, you're using one of mine. So you're going to go down to like one and a, one and a half a mine. You're going to go down to like 30 to 45 diapers uh-huh. for the month because the absorbance. I also design them where they're real thin, but the absorbent is what's in the diaper is damn near double who put you onto the diaper game there's so many i, I uh, feel like i've been trying to get at the root of these questions for no, a long um, time you now. know what my boy steve marcano he had a company that he used to have somebody else ran it called my little star <clears throat> one of my new york brothers out of new york uh-huh. but the, the diaper company was like in default something was going on with it so he had just told me about it <clears throat> so i think that's what planted the seed of it so one day I was in in the Bronx meeting with the Bodega Association. There's a Bodega Association? Nothing goes in the bodegas without getting a clearance from the Bodega Association. They get a cut, 20%. So if you got a product, you have to go through the Bodega Association, they approve it, and they put it in the bodegas. I always thought the bodegas were like the final wild, wild west of capitalism. It seems like they're uh, really just doing whatever they feel no. like doing. Really? Structure. I met with him. I met with the president before he died. Um, even attended his funeral. Ah. Uh. And uh, the new guy that took over, a lot of them are from uh, DR. Uh-huh. So um, <clears throat> I met with them because quite naturally got a product. I didn't know really about it. I'm like, well, well I'm going to sell it at. Right. So it started off in the Bronx where I seen these kids running around with these, these, these diapers. I'm like, yo, what's up with that diaper? They said, whack, it's like just to catch the waves. It's called fitties, and they give you 20 for five dollars. Oh, so some cheap ass diapers. Cheap ass. I said, damn. So the people, the kids in the hood, because of the money problem, mm. gotta wear you know what that comes, rash. Mm. Just not right. My kid's at an awkward stage in her life right now because she will wake up from her nap or sleep in. She will have a turd in her diaper. She will pull the diaper off and sort of take the turd and throw it at the wall like an enraged gorilla at the zoo. Yeah, bro. You, your, your kid's different. She's wilding. She might be like her dad. I walk into the room, and I just see her with, like, poop on her hand. She, she had a turd stuck to her heel the other day. I don't like to put too much out there like that, but that's crazy. She had a turd stuck to her heel. She was well, stomping on on the diaper. You might need to give her more toys to play with, bro. Well she's in the crib. This is in the morning when there's nothing going on going on. Well you don't give her no toys in her, her bed. Or she's crib. got a couple little toy babies and everything. Yeah no give her some little squeezy toys. 
She yeah. looks like she wants to squeeze those stuff. But keep in mind, this is like we have the speaker set up so we can hear her crying in the morning. This is she's doing all this before we even have a chance to like notice that she's up. That's a wild baby right there. Wow. She belongs to the streets. <laughs> Metaphorically, yo, he said it. I'll be uh, okay, but in a different way. I mean, there's there's certain streets where throwing shit is normal. You know, she might fit in downtown. I just if she left, was an adult. I just left Hong Kong and Vietnam. Um, yo, how I got was a, that? Great. Um, I visit two warehouses, um, two manufacturing centers. I got to get ahead of myself because I got a I got a pretty big individual that wants to buy in and become a business partner. And I know once that happens, it's gonna open up a lot of doors. So I'm gonna have to be able to handle the supply and demand. Mm. So I got one factory that can do 105 containers a month. And so, what is Nick Cannon bringing to the table in all this? No, Nick. Nick has Nick allowed me to use his logo. A little licensing deal type thing. He's not involved no, financially. No, I no incredible diapers as a trademark. I own 100. percent Oh, okay. He owns incredible uh, entertainment, television, movies, okay. music, all that. Um, but he allowed me to use his logo, and my logo. The only difference is it has diapers going down the middle of the end, uh huh. Right, but that's my brother, so I still gave him an overall percentage anyway. Okay, you know because he didn't have to let me use his logo. I could have got away with the incredible diaper things because of the trademark for that product was wide open. Uh huh. Right, but you know that's my brother. You know I think I brought you over to meet Nick. You did. And, and why not let him in as a partner? And Akon was just posted up, chilling, yeah, like it was nothing. <laughs> He's just there all the time. I was, I called I was you, shocked. Come on, pull up. You did. So Me, well, Peak COVID. Yeah, it was peak I, COVID. I almost felt like I should have pulled up in a mask. <laughs> what you trying to say about the brothers? No, I'm just saying, like, it was at the time period where. You had COVID? Yeah. I've never had it. Yeah, I haven't. None of my family members in my household had it. Brutal. I lost a ton of muscle, ton of strength. I was feeling great. Got COVID. Whooped my ass. It was at least like a month and a half before I really felt like decent again. That's crazy. Yeah. Rest in peace, AR, man. Uh, AR, man. Avante Rose, rest in peace. Who's that? Games Hype, man. Oh, I saw those posts on his Instagram, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You remember AR, all the fucking tattoos. Right, so that's his boy from like way back in the day? Way back. They grew up as kids, man. He was, AR was a life for the party. You really? know, you got that, uh, you know, what's those white dudes? Be doing all that crazy shit. The Klan? No, the crazy, no, not them, motherfucker. Well, but they doing That's some crazy shit. That's what got your shit. ass in trouble. <laughs> the ones be doing all these crazy pranks and jumping. The Nelk on. Boys. No. Jackass. Yeah. AR would have been the first real black jackass member. Really? Crazy as fuck life of the party. Damn, how'd he die? Um, I'm hearing it was a suicide. Ooh. I haven't got in depth with it, but I'm hearing it was a suicide. That's a shame. Which is kind of like it's different. Always wild. Yeah, because he always he was full of life. So, you ever you know, thought about that? What? Nah, never. Never. I've been in some bad spots, prison, solitary confinement, fight murders. Is not solitary confinement is when those dark thoughts started to enter your head. No, not really. It just it makes you look within yourself because you have nothing else to do. Right. You know what I mean? You know, a book is like a motherfucking. Steak at Maestro's and a movie at the eye pick. Mm. In there, because you sit there, you know, you count all the bricks on the walls. You do all the push-ups you can do. You know, you sleep as much as you can sleep. And when you wake up, you're still there by yourself. You beat murders? I, I, it's been so long since I've talked about the early I beat days attempted of murder, Wack 100. Beat a, attempted murder, beat a murder. Um, you know, I, I got my whole arrest record. I keep my paperwork on my phone. Really? I'm not like these new wave dudes. Right. Uh, if you come from these streets, it's a few things that... You can never take personal. If you bail out, you go to jail, bail out, and then somebody asks you how you get out, either uh, provide a dismissal receipt or a bail receipt. Uh huh. If somebody asks you for your paperwork on a particular case, provide that. Somebody just recently tried to hit me up about paperwork of a rapper, but the paper rate that they had, like I put them in touch with 1090 Jake, and he could not confirm it that in ain't any who way. You want to go with? <laughs> who, do I, who do I go with? Mickey Truth. Okay. I don't think I know him. Um, no, it's a female. Oh. She works for me. I work with her. She does. She's the one that it, in in eight minutes, when I pulled that dude that set Lil Bootsy up, uh -huh. right, was able to go find his real name, pull all his documents, and guess what? Downward departure, sealed file, cooperant, and the letter that he wrote to the judge. Okay. 
begging the judge, please, I don't want to go to court with my co with my co-defendants. Mm -hmm. Right, that quick. Mickey Truth is who you go to. I'm gonna hook you up with her, send it over to her. She'll do all the research, break everything down. And if you want her to run it, she'll run it. If you want her to send it back, with well, footnote, she send it back. Because you're she calls you, it right. You're kind of like the face of not caring about snitching at this point. But that's only for people you consider civilians. For 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 the streets, it's still civilians mega not important. Snitches to me, right? See, it's like cat. It's your job. If you want to go commit a crime and you from the streets and you want to go do some shit, mm -hmm. you know it's still no different than you want to go rob a fucking bank. Right. 99.9% .9 of the people in the bank are going to be regular civilian people, mm -hmm. right? If this is what you want to do, it's on you to know how to cover up, get in, execute, and get out. If somebody sees you, recognizes a tattoo, or whatever the fuck entails on you, they're, those are not snitches. Mm -hmm. they're, they're supposed to tell the truth. And the problem with the streets is they want to force their ways, right, on society. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that because you don't represent the, the mass majority of society. Right. The ghetto doesn't represent that. Okay, but you 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 have stated that 6 9 gets a pass. QCP, you're not feeling the Hold accusations on. that were put on him, right? I didn't say a pass. Whatever... The people that are involved in this case uh -huh. feel they want to do, that's their business. But do I look at 6 9 as I would look at the game right. telling? No. Okay. But Gunner was a real crip. Are you, 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 yeah, you but fuck he with was, him? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he, I didn't do did videos with him. He didn't show up. You know, that's just like me showing up and me telling you're going to be like, whack, you snitch. Right. There's no ducking it. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? He showed up. And whack, I got my homies with me. Your homies, I said, Gunner, you from the yeah? I bang. I'm from six zero. He claimed six zero. Right, right. So yeah, he got out. But then he claimed some other shit in Atlanta. I forget what it was. That's what he claimed. I mean, he's always been from Atlanta to okay. me. Okay, you know what I mean. So, but so, do you think that the streets will have any kind of patience with Gunner, or or that they'll accept him back? It kind of seems like well, a no, even though the album is hot to me, and well, I feel uh, like people are fucking with the album. First of all, there's there's a divide in the two. Uh huh. Whack is Gunner snitch? Yes. Whack, what do you think Gunner's album or what do you think his music gonna do? Great. You think? Because his fan base, his crowd doesn't care. The streets, y'all hear me, y'all may not like this. What it was just 10 years, 15, 20 years ago, the 90s, early 2000s, the streets is no longer the stamp of credibility when it comes to an artist. Right. But it does feel like street rap is pretty much like one of the biggest aspects of hip hop. And it feels like Gunna, prior to all this, you would have said that one of the big reasons why Gunna is so respected and everything was because he seemed like a real never. solid street dude. You don't never. think so? I would have never. His association with I Thug, Lil never Baby, put all these guys. In the same lane as Mozzie. Well, okay. Mozzie's a little bit more explicit about his uh, street style. Mozzie's a real street dude. Right. Gunner didn't put it out there as much, but you're saying he's officially a rolling sixties crib. I mean, that makes him a street dude. Well, he's dude, claiming right? that. That's what he's claiming. Somebody had to okay him saying yeah, that, I though, mean, right? Well, you know, maybe it was his money. Maybe it was because he took a few people on tour. Right. Oh, I think he had a, a, a crip affiliation for a long time. Well, you know, although he um, was on Crime Stoppers at one point, so there is a precedent for this. Yeah. And he told. Yeah. Do you well, know he was he was basically naming the person who killed his homie or some shit, right? It's telling. Right. I was telling, but his music is gonna do great. I actually think if he wouldn't have put out that dumbass song first and just put out what his fan base has been catering to and totally ignored the shit, it would have did even better. But I, I feel like he should stop addressing what he did because there's no answer for it. But what was Gunna's Gunna's music was so lighthearted. It was all about drugs and drip no, and jewelry mean, back P. in the day. He yeah, push one, a P. What does that mean? It's just like, hey, I'm cool. He got a song called well, we go, Take It to Trial. It was mostly about drip. Take It to Trial ain't about no fucking drip. I mean, I don't even remember that song. He got but, him, uh, um, Thug, and somebody else. It wasn't, he wasn't really talking about a lot of street shit for the most part. I feel like if people were going to listen to a new Gunna project and it was going to be all, hey, check out my Amiris, look at my cool new sweater that I got, look at my jewelry... I wouldn't be interested. The reason why I'm captivated by the album is because I keep catching all these little things he's he got to say my about name his predicament. In the song. You heard him drop my name in the song? Did he? Oh, yeah. He yeah. said, I'm, uh, oh, what he said, I ain't whack, uh, but I'm 100, some shit like that. Okay. But what he should have said, whack 100 and never be a gunner. Woo. Bars, whack 100 and never be a gunner. That, could, that rhyme's pretty good, yeah. 
That could work. Whack, what that mean? Right. You know what that mean? How you feel about him putting you in a song like that? Uh, good looking out, Gunner Bozo. You took the motherfucking <laughs> cake. You know what I'm saying? You took the cake, anime. Damn, Bozo. Learn how to sit down, shut the fuck up, and not do what we want you to do. Uh -huh. That's why your ass is a little bitty-ass boy, because I was pushing a few little buttons, and you did exactly. Thanks for the clout. Clout is the new cocaine, my nigga. I just don't shit. get high. But if you know, if he was known for being a drug, the dope man, like on blow, uh -huh. whether you got high or not, it was clout. It was a great thing. Business, great business. Right. Gonna mention my name. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Slap the <laughs> shit out of his little bitch. But okay. Like, Gunner look soft. He looked like, you know what he looked like? A little nigga, you just rub his face. But you you're leaning into the the meme of gonna being a fat ass, which when I met him, I realized ass, oh, he's not really that fat. Everything about him, the way he talks, you know, everything about him is it's just nice. It's like strawberry shortcake. Uh, well, that's some good shit. Not if it's you. Right, not All he is the freckles. Right. He should be the only brown-skinned guy with freckles. <laughs> you see all the light-skinned girls on TikTok who could do the fake freckles? <laughs> yeah. Where did that come nah, from? but you know what? Uh, I hope his album does extremely well. Y'all go stream Gunner. I mean, it's literally no troll. Download on the iTunes Go stream, 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 YouTube, Spotify, because at the end of the day, it's beneficial to Thugger. Mm. That's business. Somebody pointed out to me on the podcast the other day that maybe I'm feeling the Gunna album so much because the central theme of the Gunna project is people turning their back on him. And perhaps I relate to that because of the last few months of my life. Um, but I wouldn't say they turned their back on you because... I didn't say it either. I'm going to blame it on the guy who was sitting here. I'm going to say this. Majority of that situation was your decision, mm. or you and your team's decision. Mm. A few of them you were gonna let go. You said that the young lady, it really wasn't nothing for her to do. Oh, well, that was different. That was more just like worker bee type stuff. I'm talking about the on air talent. You just said yourself that AD you were removing from one of the main one shows. One of the shows, yeah. That's so that that was one decision, but nobody who left in terms of the on air talent the was dude my decision. That did the food show. You say he farted too much. I did not you say that. that. Shit. You Although, said he had I did not say that. Fellatio. It's you almost that certainly shit. true. Hello, bro. What? You said that shit off off the thing. You said dude <laughs> farted too much, bro. I don't know that I've ever heard him fart. Yeah, you said something about, and it was cool <laughs> until he delivered a wet fart on the motherfucking couch. <laughs> do know? I'm just I saying. I don't even know. Please the believe me. I don't, I don't think that I've ever heard him fart. I don't know. Maybe well, they he told looks you. like he packs a mean fart. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. So, uh, man, what's going on with my guy, man? I can't never catch him. What's the dude? The North Dakota dude. Flacco. You yeah, trying Flacco. to catch him? No, I, I talk to him every day. You want to run down on him? No, no, no. no. I like Flacco. I now. could get behind that. I, no, I got I like Flacco. Flacco. I had him ready to fight now in the boxing ring. Right. Um, he was gonna fight. Uh, what's the dude? Uh, Bosco. He was gonna fight Bosco yeah, too. Yeah. Because Crib Mac was supposed to fight well, Bosco. Crib Mac had pulled out. So Crib Mac said him, Bosco pulled out. No, originally, not right now. Originally, when the first Crib Mac pulled out, but it wasn't nothing. Come to find out, they just wasn't taking care of something they supposed to take care of. Um, and um, <clears throat> I told him, I said, yo, Flacco's more of a draw than Crib Mac anyway. What? Crib Mac hey, is yo, a huge draw. Nah, bro, listen. Y'all, Flacco has gotten big. They talking about Flacco, bro. Are You're they? sleeping on Where? I'm telling you real Vietnam? shit. Vietnam? No, everywhere he's attracting the weird crowd that I don't that don't fuck with me. Really, I'm tell it's a total different little bland. I hate to say it, he tapping into that academic crowd. Well, he, he does. The have ones a that few hate academics yeah. are liking Flacco. I don't know. All right. I mean, I, I'm not putting down Flacco. You know what I'm gonna do? Flacco has said that he could whoop Crip Mac. He said that. He said he used to box. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you got the heart for it. Just because you can box don't mean you got the heart. I feel like I might never see Flacco again if I he think, fights Crip Mac. I think Flacco could win. I would bet. I would place a bet, bro. Have you been around Crip Mac in real life? Uh, There's never. There's maybe a foot and a half height difference. Crip Mac is a huge behemoth of a man. But it comes down to coordination. Now. But he's also been in, he's in been, the county jail whooping people's asses for, for years now. But those are cell fights. You're getting in the ring with gloves and rules. If no, he spends enough, not really. If he spends enough right. time with 600, his manager. Right. Right. Former manager, I think. Oh, I thought they were still. They still, I think they do boxing business, but the, he's not really managing if his If he spends day -day. enough time with 600 and he listens to 600, 
um, I think 600 could give him uh, what he needs to have the the style, the form, the balance that he needs to, to be able to fight. Yeah. I respect 600. Um, but I don't think that Crit Mac would really need any of that to whoop Flacco's ass. I'm going to be honest with you. Then you don't think, I think Flacco might listen. I have no reason to believe that Flacco has any ability to fight. I will bet a whopping, fuck that shit. I will bet a whopping three pesos that Flacco will whoop him. I would bet a hundred grand right now that Crib Mac would whoop I bet Flacco's ass. Fuck us. you would. I would. Cause y'all tell Flacco to take a dive, or you gonna fire him from no jumper and give him ten of the hundred grand. There's almost nothing fuck I would bet a hundred grand on, but I would bet a hundred grand on that. And I say that with much love for Flacco, and I don't you know, want to see him get his skull cr- crushed or anything. I've but, been watching you, bro. Uh. Uh-uh. You know, um, you know, I've been watching Gilly and Wallow. You know, they got the bag. I've been watching them Ferraris and Lamborghinis. They because you hate Gilly, right? No, I love Gilly. That's my brother. You've been going in on him. I All remember right. we did that podcast with uh, uh, Wack and, or yeah, with, yeah. with academics, and you chose to use this opportunity to, to go talk about, in on Gilly. talk about, about the, the little fight. You know, about right Beanie Siegel supposedly yeah. punking him off a block back in the day. It started yeah. to get but a little my heated. Brother. Gilly, look, man, Gilly gets his jabs in on me, too. Uh-huh. Now, we may disagree. He may not like something I said or did or whatever. But also, like, you can't do nothing to Gilly around me. You can't call me, talk about set Gilly up. You can't. That's my brother. I love Gilly. I love Wallow. Okay. But I say that to say this. They've been having a fun. It's well-deserved. But you. <laughs> but you. You spend your money on equipment. I watch you go from one little building over there on fucking right. Santa Monica to over there to this. And I'm like, dude rocks the same vehicle for like two, three years. Mm-hmm. No fancy shit. No you jewelry. You stacking your money. Yeah. But I just watched you go to Europe for a month. Ooh. And I know what the fuck that takes. Bruh. Flights. You going to fly like me. You in the front. Business. I already know that. You going to fly like me. Um, I know what it takes. Did you go to the U.K.? We did Italy, Spain, and France for a month. Well, either way, our and money we, ain't really shit over there. We're paying like two a, hotel rooms. We're staying in five star hotel rooms, and we got two hotel rooms because we needed a separate one for her assistant. Got you. Yeesh. Okay. The euro versus the dollar. Almost we lo- equal. We're right losing now. about twenty seven to thirty three cent on the dollar. Is it? She told me it was like one to one, but, but when she, I didn't she look into it. You. She lying to me. You go to the UK, <laughs> it's down there forty to fifty cent. Right. You spend motherfucking five thousand, charge your bank seventy five hundred. But they still got the pound out there, don't they? That's the pound. Yeah. So, but to be out there, you spent a pretty penny. Yeah. But what I respect is this motherfucker kept ro- rolling. Mm. That made me respect you. Appreciate that. Real shit. I mean, your team around you was solid. <clears throat> you know, the decisions you made, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, you got to stay down to come up anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, so. I don't like I, no fancy shit. I don't like cars. I don't like jewelry. No, it's I've easy been, for me. I've been watching you. Yeah. <clears throat> you were, you know, I, I'm like, I, you know, I pretty much know the notes. Mm. By the way, the car game's fucked up right now. Why? I thought I was going to melt. I have a breakdown yesterday. Why? I've never in 20 years seen the car game. This is what's going on. It's a shortage of cars. Mm-hmm. So now the demand is high. So they're marking them up. Mm. And because the world is in the state it's in, the interest rate is high. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> For instance, a Rolls Royce that may have cost $400,000 two, three years ago, uh-huh. note would have been 3300 Okay. A $200,000 car today with the rate in the markup Mm. Runs you thirty six hundred, yeah. And they mark your shit up. If it's two hundred, they want two twenty five. The bank is only going to recognize the two hundred. So the two, the twenty five thousand, right, has to come out of your pocket up front. It should be against the fucking law. They're o- they're going over what the sticker says, right? But if you want it, that's what it is. Yeah. Right. So we'll be back. We'll be back to business. I couldn't find a range. You know, I I like my daily driver. I like the extended wheelbase Range Rover. The ones I found is marked up 30,000. 30, and I just couldn't 
as a businessman. Because uh-huh. you know when you drive that shit off the lot, it depreciates anyway. Right. So you're giving away 30, then you depreciate another like 15, 20 when you drive it off the lot. Every mile we put on it, then when the body style changes, you come in, you 50 upside down. I just couldn't do it. So either I'm going to go get me, I think I'm going to go get me a black on black supercharged Camry. And wait it out for like a year or two. I was thinking that I could go Honda Civic again. I and wait it. it out for like a year or two. It felt so lightweight. Because the markup money, I could just fucking pay cash for the Camry. Right. Why you got to be changing your car up? I, I have a lease. I'm just no, sticking with the every lease every four forever. years, bro. Yeah. When the body check, my lease is up. So I like I've had 2006 Range Rover, 2010, 2014, 2019. So it's time for that one to go back. And I, the extended wheelbases are rare. They, 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 you can't find them. If you do, they marked up. They're like fucking two fucking. I'm used to doing like 165. Or Why so you need the extended wheelbase? It's, it's just like an extra six to eight inches no, in the back no, seat, it's right? Ruler. It's a ruler. Four grown ass <laughs> men. 12 inches. <laughs> four grown men could get in that car and everybody feels like they're in the front mm, seat. Yeah, that is the problem, huh? Like, this is just real shit. I had two homies in the back of my car a couple it's months ago. Up. They they seemed insulted by the amount of leg room. It's fucked up. Yeah. The G-Wagon's cool, but even for the G63, they like 210. They market them up 230. It's crazy. Yeah, my business manager was trying to get me to buy a G-Wagon. I'm like, to, to save money on taxes or whatever, I'm like, I'll just pay the taxes. I don't want to have this fucking goofy-ass car in my yard. You don't like it? It's just too fancy to me. It looks like a big, shiny, weird... Thing. I, don't I don't respect the Maybach because that's not real Maybach. It's fucking Mercedes Benz <laughs> front seats and then Maybach back seats. It says Maybach on the trunk and then a fucking emblem. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's fucking weird. I so. test drove a Bentley one time, like a year or two ago, and I just was like, this is not for me. What are you about to show me? That's crazy. Uh, blue face. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's hitting me with the topics now. <laughs> nah, what you got man, on blue face? You know, He's back hanging out with Krishan, or is he in Baby Mama World? Uh, well, they both is baby mamas, right? But one is alleged real baby mama. What? Well, I'm hearing. I don't. I didn't ask him, but it was a blood test happened. You know, you could do a blood test while the baby's in there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm hearing. I seen Krishan say um, it came back positive. Now I don't know. You know, I didn't see him deny it because he'll be quick to fucking. Did you see that dude trolling Drewski asking if he was Blueface's baby mama? Yeah, I seen that. You think that hurts Blueface's feelings, or you nah, think he just roll with the punches? It's clout. Yeah, that was pretty funny though. I'm not gonna lie. Reason why Blueface kind of salutes that because he told me, "Whack, you know, how you took me from here to there. I'm going to take her from nothing to something." His OG baby mama. Or we're talking to Krishan again. Krishan. Oh, okay, yeah. It felt like recently, though, they've been kind of apart, right? Like maybe he finally got sick of it. Yeah, he could have, uh, but you know how that shit go. They're young. Uh, you know, last time I seen him, I seen her. Uh huh. So, you know. What's up with the OG baby mama, though? I've always been fascinated by her. She's always been around. Um, She's cool. You know, Jayden's cool. <clears throat> she's a great mother. Um, She's learned how to adjust to his lifestyle. Mm. By because, letting him go and date another girl for a couple of years? Well, I don't know if it's that. I don't <laughs> I just learn how to co parent and just be a friend. You know, whatever else they doing, I really don't know. But I I, I hear very minimum. She don't show up at the studio tripping, acting crazy. I don't hear him on the phone arguing with her. You know, so she just kinda like um she's adjusted to it. Uh huh. You know, um, Whatever that may be, she's she's not a problem. Right. We're not losing business or because of her. Right. And I can respect that. I can respect that. Hey, let me ask you this: Are you with your wife at this point, or uh, did things get complicated at some point there? It, you know, things always get complicated when you do things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we got to understand it. We work through it. You know, I had to clean up a little bit. But, <clears throat> you but you're apart at this moment? No, nah, what you mean apart? Are you not with her at this moment? I'm always with her. Okay. Are you in a, a romantic relationship right now? It's my wife. <laughs> right. But was this all stemming from some potential alleged infidelity? No. Nah. That's the word on the streets. No. Nah. Um, because even you know that... It's shit that goes on in the marriage that 
the world doesn't know that you deal with anyway. True. You know that. In an ideal relationship, gonna, all your baggage is behind the scenes, been, right? It been, what the fuck is 23, 33? It been 32 years. Right, because she was holding you down for your bid and everything. I wouldn't think we've that a little cheating would. We've been 14 years old. Yeah, like a little cheating wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't think that that would be enough. You know to, what's crazy is a lot of people that talk about us don't know us. Right. They going off some social media shit. Mm-hmm. Like I was going to stage a fight last night to prove a point to another Crip dude. He's a rapper. Another I, Crip dude. Yeah, Crip dude. Yeah, I'm going to stage the fight, right? But I just had to leave. I said, next week we're going to stage, and I'm going to show you how fast people believe it, how quick your phone blows up, my phone blows up. Just drop some music. Mm. So, you know, I, um, when somebody else is controlling the narrative. Let's talk about it. Are you going out of your way to enrage the Crip demographic out here in Los Angeles? Because I heard you using a particular gang slur that it was pretty unpopular with a bunch of people. Which slur is that? S-I-S-S-I-E-S. Yeah. I'm not going to even say it. He dis rule. So who was this guy that you were yelling at on the phone? I don't know. Listen, this is the problem. And this was very weird. I got a, a misunderstanding, and I'm at odds with one particular individual, an individual that we was brothers for 18 years. Talking about Big Year. Yeah. Right. So you got a lot of these dudes, right, that I don't know. I don't know these dudes. But I know Big U. Mm-hmm. Big U's not going to send a motherfucker on there to go say something crazy to whack, use my name, disrespect him, and say shit, because we both know things about each other. We both can say shit. We mm. both know where each other's front door is at. We both know each other's wife and kids, right? But I'm a paru, right? And I know in their world, they've been brainwashed to think that they the biggest thing in the world. In my world, right, I haven't been brainwashed. It's been proven, right, that paru is always going to be the depths of what we what it, what it is, right? So when you... Dis Paru, I'm going to dish your shit. I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be a Christian. That's my religion. Mm-hmm. So when you come on there and say, fuck that, you think I'm not going to respond and have my comrades looking at me crazy? Mm. Nah, nigga, I'm going to respond and whatever it is, it is. Because what? we enemies by nature anyway. So what need to happen is, and it's probably happened because since that day, Cause what I start doing, I start saying other shit. Since that day, I don't hear from them little dudes. Hey, homie, y'all be talking about he doing this, but you niggas going on there. And the first thing I hear Wax saying is, hey, bro, I don't know you. I don't know you. Mm-hmm. So if I don't know you, I have no gripe with you. I don't got no beef with you. I don't know you. But you're doing it in the name of this individual, which I know goddamn well he didn't send you to do that. So I think part of it is, I want to seem like on something, and then I want some whack 100 clout. Because mm-hmm. next thing you know, that quick, they clip it and it goes somewhere. Even this little dude you do your thing with, one of his biggest clips is my name's in the title. Mm-hmm. I let him eat. I can go pull it down, but that's your man, right? So I let him eat, right? Let's go on there with whack, start an argument with whack, and this. So that means those crip dudes, right, is on wax dick. Mm-hmm. Let me see you ride on your cripism. You don't see whack coming up and ride on on cripism. I'm standing on what Wack does as a paru, as a man, as a businessman, right? You never see me going looking for these dudes to say, hey, dudes, this, 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 and then I'm putting it up. Mm-hmm. I got a motherfucking channel, right, that you will go, I don't put shit up on it. I don't give a fuck about it, mm-hmm. right? But if you go look at their shit, immediately they got Wack up on their shit with my name in the title. So that means... You really ain't no real crip from that set because that set had a moniker called Rich Rolling, which means they was niggas known for getting money, knowing how to get money. Mm-hmm. So I say this like this. Any nigga from Rolling 60s that don't know me, that goes out of their way to want to say something to me for no reason on the app, I don't recognize you as a six, as a 60. You a little bitch because a real 60 ain't going to stand on the dick of a par root. And I know that that man that they under ain't telling these little dudes, go on in and say something to him. Because he know me. He know my mouth. He know my mind. He know how slick I can get. And he know how, street, how strategic I can get. As I do him. 
But is it a concern for you that you have kind of created enemies with arguably the largest gang in Los Angeles just by using that certain gang slur? Here goes the problem. Here goes the problem. This is just how I assume it works. Here goes the problem. Okay. You got a dude that's brainwashing you to thinking something. That I'm not ain't. being brainwashed. No, it's real. I, I talk because to a lot the of dudes people. that establish what he's talking about, he ain't that. He don't even come from that generation. Matter of fact, his own homies is telling him to pull up. His own homies is saying, you ain't a sick soul. But then he did pull up. I don't know. I mean, the niggas is over there. I did he the handle his business? He was wearing all green, looking like a leprechaun. Yeah, he okay, was in but, the parking but, lot. But, but, but it's still, they running the campaign on you. So you should stop. Dick ride and talking to the par root that don't know you and go handle your business with the niggas that saying you from their neighborhood and they don't know you. He has no reason. I don't even know this little dude. Oh, so now we're now we're fully doing the brick baby conversation. I don't know the nigga. Uh huh. What? Why are you infatuated? Is he part of the community? But he's somebody who maybe doesn't have a reason to be beefing with you directly, but he runs under that flag. He, he hears you bro, using a certain bro, slur. Tell you he something. feels like he has to say something let me tell at you a certain something. point, right? Before you say something to me, say something to the nigga that dissed me first. Nigga, this power rule, I'm going to die about that. Mm-hmm. So I don't give a fuck where you from or how dangerous or how deep you think you is. You diss my shit, I'm going to diss your shit like any motherfucking respectable gangster going to do. Mm-hmm. That's it. You going to diss my shit and then go to the blogs, oh, this nigga diss Paul Rue and whack didn't say nothing? You got the game fucked up. Now, here go the problem. The same nigga that diss my shit, he ain't ready to come do nothing about it. He going to run over there to his homies and say, oh, look what he did. No, make that nigga pull up. Make him get dirty and take that chance. So you would be happy to run a fade with this guy? Listen, you don't dictate how it go. I'm from Paul Rue, not 6-0. What's the difference? Make that nigga, Different that nigga that came there? on there and diss P Funk, he forced my hand, homie. I got 60s that I love. Mm-hmm. Real shit that I love, and it fucked me up, but he put me in a position where I had to defend my honor, defend my flag. Because I don't know this nigga. Like, I don't know nothing about him. So the question is, why is you going over there antagonizing this man that don't know you, don't owe you no money? We ain't sent you to do it. That's some internet shit. We don't want you to move like that. We don't move like that. And you diss his shit knowing that the proper response is to diss your shit, which is our shit. And then now, you ain't doing nothing about it. You as an individual, why you ain't doing nothing about it? You, nigga, you take the penitentiary chance. You, fuck going over there, hide behind your homies, because I talk to 60s all the time. I was just with 600. Bro, bro, you good, you good, you good, you good. The last time 600 got got at me, he sent me a $25 million contract on my phone right now. For what? What was the contract? For a fight with Mike Tyson. You fighting Mike Tyson? No. He setting up a fight with Mike Tyson. He sent me the plate, right? Okay. So that ain't no fuck power rule, fuck 60 type vibe. So we got these little punk ass niggas, bro, who antagonizing and saying shit and want to get shit going, and they're gonna hide behind their homies and say, "Ooh, look what he said." But little nigga, look what you said first. Yeah. I and why are you even talking that. to this man? The man is saying over and over again, "I don't know you, homie." Uh huh. Why do people always say that? I don't know you. Who are you, nigga? Because I don't know you. It don't really matter, though, right? It does matter, cause. These niggas is weird. The Crips I know, they stand on they cripping. They ain't never relied on no nigga from another from the other side, right? To empower them. They do business with them. Right? But these niggas now is weird. It's like, ooh, ooh, they go whack. Let's say something so we can get a clip and then put it on the, on YouTube. Mm. Is I don't know you. Is Clubhouse ruining gangbanging to a certain extent? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a gangbanger. Okay, gang membership. I don't know. I don't know what them. I don't know. I be hearing this nigga from this hood, that hood. This nigga ain't this. I don't know these little dudes. I was just saying, like you're the Elon Musk of Clubhouse street shit. So here go the thing. <laughs> if you know right, it's an issue. Uh-huh. Why say anything to me? Why come in my space? I make it a point not to go in their space. Mm. Right. Because me going in a space kind of be kind of like is a form of antagonizing. Oh yeah. Right. So don't go in a space. I, I stay in my spaces. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So why come in my space? 
and then get to saying a bunch of weird shit. So you stay in a, a mostly Pyru space no, on Clubhouse? I stay house? in a my space. Or just is, no ops my allowed? My space got Crips, Bloods, Pyrus, niggas from every state. Motherfuckers from the community, LGBTQ right. community. I got square motherfuckers. I got bitches, man, Jewish people. My space is trans people. My, my, yeah, trans people, queer people, gay people. You know what I'm saying? My space is is what my business represents the world. Okay. I don't even allow. I just had a situation where one of the homies wanted to have a room called Bombardier Ventral. I didn't go for it <laughs> because you're changing the C's to B's, and I got. Uh, Crips on my stage that I love. So I'm like, either you change that back to Comedy Central, this ain't what that is. Because uh-huh. I don't need, because the first thing they're going to want to do is identify, oh, whack running a, a Paru thing. Right. My shit on Clubhouse is not a Paru thing. I just happen to be a Paru that's over it. Uh-huh. And you're not going to put me in a box like that. Right. I do business. I negotiate with everybody. Okay. I like You know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. So they shit is what it is. They name of they shit. Everything's a representation of that. Cool, that's your thing. Is there any truth to the rumor that you put an alleged leader or a higher up from the other side? Is there any truth to the idea that you might have leaked their address or doxed them in some way? Who address? We'll edit this out. Big U. I don't know his address offhand. Okay, that's that's, that's not true because somebody said that to me, and I was like, wow, that seems over the line. Well, you know, they hollering my address. Oh, so it is true. No, I, didn't, I don't know the direct <laughs> address. Okay. But they hollering locations. Uh-huh. You hollering locations, nigga. See, you know I don't know nothing about you. I'm going to fire back. And you say you coming in the name of that. Little dude need his little ass beat. But are they talking about the nigga came on there and said, I caught you and your daughter slipping? Man, fuck you and them niggas. Is there any truth to that? He told me where I was at. I said, well, why you didn't get out? I was at that location. I caught you and your daughter slipping. Nigga, what you think, how you think it's going to go? Any man, fuck cripping and blood and power ruin. A man, how you think it's going to go? So now you ask yourself, hey, homie, you, uh, you coming in here popping big you name, like he sent you, and you telling me you caught me and my daughter slipping. Oh, so that's what that is? What is the decorum if you see someone you have a problem with and they're with their kids? Because I would like to think that maybe we could with, leave that alone. My, right? Look, my thing is I'm not gonna say nothing about it. I don't. I don't fuck with women. I don't fuck with kids. Yeah, that's always been my been the rules. But yeah. nigga, you can't come tell me, yeah, the big homie this and nigga, we caught you and your daughter slipping. Oh, at that point in time, nigga, it's all bets off. Eesh. But another thing. Do I think Big U wanted him to say that? No. Mm. But, again, they're still at it. So that means Big U ain't stopping it. Mm. So because you ain't stopping it and saying, hey, homie, I don't see whack coming at y'all. Y'all come at him. You diss in his neighborhood. You mention his kid. And I don't give a fuck. You been right out of date, nigga. Big U got an obligation to my kids. I got, I got one of his. I didn't already demonstrate it when a nigga pulled a knife out on his kid. When we was at it, I demonstrated and made sure his kid got home safe. Wait, what happened in that situation? Nigga, he was, we was at the studio. I walked in, and you know, shit was going on. Nigga had a big-ass butcher knife finna stab his son up. How old's his son? Nigga, what you mean? 20-something. Oh, okay. I made damn sure that butcher knife was laid down. Ask nephew what you want to do. I want to get him. Let him beat his ass. It made damn sure that Big U son made it home safe. So now I'm to a point to where I got niggas talking about with Big U, whoop whoop, and we caught your daughter slipping, nigga. Okay, so just uh, to cap this off, that. what would have to happen between Big Big U and you to make listen? Me these and Big U know away. how to deal with each other, bro. Right. I don't even want to mention the man's name, but his little homies keep coming on there in the name of him, dissing the dissing the set, dissing my neighborhood, mentioning my family. So at some point. And I know Big U. When he lay his motherfucking hand down over there, hey, nigga, keep my name out your mouth. If that nigga ain't saying nothing to you, why you saying nothing to him? That ain't the streets. You ain't seeing him. You seen whatever it is. Let it be. Uh-huh. Big U know like I know he's very capable of taking care of himself. Like I'm very capable of taking care of myself, right? And it's real shit. But until I see that stops 
And as long as they coming in there saying they doing this in the name of him, I got to take it like it's that. And it's all bets off. It occurs to me that there isn't really anybody that could make you guys sit sit down and have a conversation, which is a lot of times how it kind of works out with some of this. Well, what's shit, the right? conversation? I, I was know. the one violated. Right. Okay. You and know, I got content. Shit. I just don't. Bro, I got shit I can let go on cell phones. Conversations, shit that went on about what went on with niggas admitted to it. That you know, I just let niggas talk until I'm tired of hearing them talk, and I'm the toys letting it go. There you go. Fight yourself. But there's no need for it. Dude doing what he doing, I'm doing what I'm doing. I ain't never needed nobody to do what I do but my family, my my friends, and my loved ones, and my business partners. That's all I needed. Can't name one of them niggas say I leaned on them to make something happen. Outside of two T's from Bonnie Hunters who set up my meeting up with game. Can't name nigga tell you I leaned on them to make something happen. And my artists that I work with. Uh-huh. They come to whack for shit. I didn't make them niggas money. I challenge them. I guarantee you they can't put on the table where they made me some money, but I can put it on the table where I made them some money. Mm-hmm. Well, they utilized my resources, but it was love. It was a family thing. I wasn't even. It wasn't even a hustle to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just real shit. But you know, he let Suge get in his head, and he did some shit that I couldn't. I couldn't accept, bro. You can't. You can't walk in my place of business and try to derail my business. Wouldn't it be a great narrative if? I was the one to minister Farrakhan the situation and bring you guys together. Farrakhan can't. Even Farrakhan can't, himself bro, couldn't listen, do it? Listen, no. okay. listen, I was I taught no something. Chance. Listen, I was taught something and told something by one of my G homies in Soledad a long time ago, little man, six dudes brim. Mm-hmm. A man that could tell me to sit down and I'm going to sit down out of pure respect. Even if I didn't want to, I'm going to sit out of pure respect. He said, when a snake bites you, you must first extract the poison. Then you get away from or get rid of the snake. Right? Mm-hmm. So why do you sit down when you already survived the bite? Dude, 57 years old. He just had a son, went pro. I commend him on that. Because one thing they can't take from him is what he does for them children when it comes to raising them you know, he have eight kids over there that ain't his. And he raised them and feed them and get them to school and make sure they do homework. Commit can't nobody take that from him. I know this man. And to watch his son, Dayon, and I watched him raise and do everything for <clears throat> get picked in the draft was an emotional moment for me. Mm. Even though we at odds, because I know what that meant to to Big U and Dayon's mama. You know what I'm saying? Because they worked hard for that. To keep that young man out of trouble and and, and, and do what they had to do to make sure his college was right and, and shit. I didn't been on the phone. We trying to, how we going to get his car to him, get his vet to him when he was up in Reno, you know, and shit like that, right? You know, it's unfortunate I couldn't join those festivities, but I watched it. And I, I applauded. That's a good thing because that could be a turn in, in, in what their family is doing, right? Mm-hmm. But on the flip side of things, the respect to certain things has to be mutual. Right. My homies have never approached his kids or never, uh, you know, mentioned his children or, or or even him. I got some homies going to live and die with me. You see what pull up with me, but you don't see them mentioning that man's name. Uh-huh. But it seemed to me like his homies, these little dudes on his app, go out their way to say the name of Big U and whoop de whoop de whoop boom, 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 boom. Then they force of the conversation. Because if I wanted to have these conversations, I would have been had them. Uh-huh. But when you coming at me and you saying in the name of him, I got to respond, homie. Right. It's a natural thing for me to fight back or well, whatever I can fight with. I see. I, I, I see your side of how this is going down. And I see how difficult it's going to be for things to go back in time and be cool again. But I, I do hope that eventually you're able to get closer to an understanding. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, his space is his space, my space is mine. Right. Um, I love dude's family. I said, what we go through? You know, me and his wife used to laugh and joke about him, with him. You know what I'm saying? I didn't got into it with my wife. I drive 
pass my neighborhood up, go to his house, and go to sleep on the couch mm-hmm. in the middle of his neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, I didn't have some of his homies. His homies call me and tell me they hollered at him and whacked some of the shit you saying. He said, nah, that's what it is. And it was some bullshit out of the studio that somebody gave him some wrong information. All kind of shit going on. But at the end of the day, he's supposed to know better. Certain shit you can't tell me about him, and I'm just going to believe it. Right. So, you know, because he chose to believe it, I think it was driven by other things, you know, animosity, maybe a little jealousy. I don't know. You know what I mean? I've always been one to set out and do what my mind tells me to do and help people on the way. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people got this dream of being a music mogul, being the one. I just got a dream of taking care of my family, creating generational wealth, whether it's music, diapers, uh, dog shit, dog food. I don't give a fuck what it is, as long as it's legal and it's profitable and it's something I can leave behind. Actual dog food. Yeah, I don't give a fuck what it is. Not bro. that shit. Forty two. I don't Doug care. Was I don't. Yeah, I don't need no. to be. You know, I've, I didn't had his own homies tell me wacky. He je- jealous. What you mean he jealous of me? Well, you know what he is in the streets. He want to be that in the industry, and he felt like you didn't help him enough. Man had access to all my resources, bro. Mm-hmm. He's too dedicated to shit that don't work. Like what? Some some of his groups. Hey, look, bro. I don't give a fuck how long you stand in the pocket with him. Either the fans is fucking with them or they ain't. But you signed artists that didn't really work out. And guess times, what? Right? I move on to another. Mm. You want to continue to work, use a spot, great. You get something going on, I pick it up, add the fuel to the fire. But I'm not going to stay stagnated with that. Mm. Well, that is the tough part about signing artists or even signing hosts, like with what I do. Sometimes you like somebody. And then it feels like at a certain point, business is business, if bro. it's not working, you got to have a tough if conversation. If you like them and they don't like them, do you stay there 10 years, 15 years? Mm. And then you watch somebody over here saying, how we do that? Because I'm either it's working or it's not, and I'm moving on. Right. And I'm not discriminating. I'm not putting myself in a box saying, I'm only working with power rules. Right. You know, he only like to work with his neighborhood. Mm. You in a box. I get that. But that's too much commitment to something, right, that's going to hinder you from doing real business. Yeah. I could see that. Well, he has a pretty big number of people to choose from from his neighborhood, right? It's a lot of rappers. Well, give me one that's working. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tapped my out. My neighborhood. I'm not sure who he's working with at this My moment. neighborhood. I found success in Compton and as a today schoolyard crip, and I got one dude that I'm working with from 107 Hoover, mm-hmm. Young Magnificent. He's dropping um, July um, 16th. Symbolic for 716, which is all the Hoover sets from Faux Trey all the way up to um, 11 Deuce. When you add them up, it totals 716. So 716 degrees coming out. I'm going to start releasing the singles next week. His first little EP. You know, I'm not E from Hoover. Mm-hmm. They every, you know, like Trail, they, they everybody killing. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to uh, disregard the young man because he's from Hoover. I feel he's talented. You know what I mean? I'm going to give him a shot. But you'd probably have a hard time signing somebody from the 60s at this point, right? Um, no, because as long as it went through the right individual, I, it wouldn't mm. wouldn't matter to me. I feel like his friends would probably have an issue with it. Uh, I don't know about that. I got friends over there, too, mm. that, that do their own business. And you know what? I'm going to take this time right now, right? Um, I stood on me defending my neighborhood. But to my homeboys, a few of y'all out there, you know, the s Max. The big D's, even loose cannon, six hundred. My nigga, I was out of line. I shouldn't even let that little nigga take me to that point. Mm. I did that. Nigga caught me at a bad time, but you know these is nigga. That's my my brothers that I fuck with. You know what I'm saying they can call me. I can call them, and I was out of line for that. And I owe y'all a call on the phone. I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna take the time in front of the world to do that with those that I genuinely. <clears throat> generally fuck with because regardless of what that nigga said, my respect for the ones that I respect, right, should have been greater than what these little pump nigga that I don't even know is saying. But that that power root thing is like, you know, is is is, <clears throat> you know, in 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 quotes of uh, 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 of, a, of a solid rooster named Wacko, you know, um, a rooster. Yeah, 
That shit is in my. That shit is in my. Shit What's ain't a rooster? Just, that shit ain't just in my flesh. It's in my blood. What's a rooster? A paro. Oh, you know what I'm so saying. So that's a term of endearment. Yeah, he the first one I ever heard say that, and that was, that was some deep shit. Is it because the rooster has you all that red saying? shit on his head? Yeah, you know that we, we paw roosters. So you know, at the oh, end of the day, it's like okay. you know that's something. Ice T had a uh, some bars. You ever heard the song Colors? Yeah. He had a where he said. Death is my set, guess my religion, colors. And that's on both sides of the track. Just like you got Muslims, you got Christians, you got Buddhists, you know, some of us, the love we got for what we represent, right, is the equivalent to people uh, that stand on their religion. And to some of us, our set, like Paru, don't just mean a drive-by or a drug dealer. It's a brotherhood. It was it was our our daddy does. It was what fed us, what protected us, what taught us. You understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So the generations now they doing what they doing. But where I come from, that's what that was. So you know when you say fuck that, take your ass to the Middle East and disrespect Islam. Hmm. You don't even have to go out there. You can just do it here and they're still gonna blow your fucking house up. Well, maybe not always. You know, but it's going to be. <laughs> there's a know, lot. It, 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 it's going to be some repercussions. Salman Rushdie got stabbed in the fucking face at a, a yeah, book reading you know. like 30 years so, after you know, they put the fatwa on him. You know, as a man, sometimes we all fall short. And I think that's a situation I fell short because I, oh. I should have respected my comrades from that. From that. And just, I should have just, you know, but the nigga said what he said and just, you know. I've been doing this since 12 years old. That's always been a, a natural thing. Mm. You say, fuck that, we gonna dish your shit off the rip. Mm-hmm. That's just what that is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Well, thank you for helping me to get a better understanding of it. Yeah, it ain't, bro, I, trust me. I'm not looking for these little dudes on Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. I'll be in there, we be talking about the stock market, or talking about a situation with an artist. Or diapers. Or anything, they'll come in there. Yeah, nigga, this whoop the whoop the whoop, nigga. You know the big homie whoop the whoop the whoop, nigga, and, and whoop the whoop the whoop and get to talking crazy. I'm like, mm. bro, I don't even know you. Right. So they really need to check that, Definitely. or just go on, be what it's gonna be. Because as you see, it's progressing. It's getting worse and worse, and more and more is said. Why is it being said? It ain't whack initiated. Mm. But I'm gonna defend myself. I'm the kid that's getting kicked in the back of his leg and the teacher catching me, catching me defending myself. Mm-hmm. And because my action is greater than the kick, they say, oh, shit. No, you gave him a black eye. Motherfucker kicked me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They really doing some coward shit because what they trying to do is get an overall involvement. Oh, look. Oh, look. But they, they're not saying, yeah, we dissed this shit. We mentioned his kids. We did this, and we told him, "Nigga, fuck that. This is that." The them fact- niggas been banging. Some of them older niggas been banging longer than me. But can you get some stripes on Clubhouse? Can no, not at all. Make the right they moves? trying to get clout. Right. I don't need no clout. Clout is kind of what you stripes need, are. Right? You don't need no clout. You fucking Adam Twenty Two. <laughs> the new people that come to your goddamn um, show, right? Um, is the ones that needed the clout. Sometimes. Nephew AD, right? When he came in there, he was AD, the rapper from Compton uh-huh. that we all knew. Loving to death. But he picked up some podcast clout being on this platform. Right. So now AD is you where he's at and the people under him. You know what I'm saying? So if for somebody's working under him right now and they and people get a little slight, oh, that's that's little Devin. He works under, you know, AD's show. And then six months from now, little Devin comes out and says, Fuck AD, bitch ass nigga. Fuck whatever, you know, they call their show, right? Mm-hmm. People gonna say, ooh, you heard what Lil Devin said? It's clout. Right. It's a good opportunity for Lil Devin. Yeah. yeah. So it's opportunity. Now, I don't know if these little niggas be rappers or maybe your man because he trying to build his shit, right? No, nobody know that nigga like that. So fuck it. Let me lean on whack and get that and put that, and that's going to grow. Who is that? That's such and such. Oh, oh, that's the nigga that's now on no jumper. But I'm the starter. Mm. Whack 100. I Put a clip up of you with your name by yourself, and let's see what it do. And work on building that. Work on, okay, I got 
uh, 2,000 views. What could I do, right? And keep working on building clips with your name in it. And then say, fuck it, you know I can I can interact with you. Like me being in here with you. You are who you are. You've been doing shit a long time. I am who I am. We complement each other and our styles of how we do interviews, my following, your following, and your platform. We're the odd couple. Whether whether you're involved or not, if I go to my social media or wherever I go and put something up, I'm going to get a response. Whether I'm involved or not, you put something up, you're going to get a response. Mm-hmm. So we ain't that ain't what we do. But these other little dudes, and but it's just like, I don't know. I don't know if they really. I don't know who these little niggas is. Okay, let, let's pivot a little bit. How did you feel? Have you ever had any real interaction with Gucci Mane prior to him uh, throwing your name in a song recently? Yeah, that's bro. Okay, he said I'm not going back and forth on the internet. I'm not whack 100. Yeah, that's bro. Something along those lines. Yeah, he can do that. Okay. Because I know you've been around him. Yeah, I know that sincerely. He respects me, so if he need to. Throw my name in the song. He didn't say he's a bitch. He's a this. He's a that. He said the truth. Right now, that ain't what Gucci Man is doing. <clears throat> we seen. I seen the growth for Gucci. Remember before Gucci went to jail, that nigga flamed up Nicki Minaj. Oh, yeah. He flamed up everybody. Those are good he days. He was heavy. Was that Twitter or something? Yeah. He was on one. We used to whoop the whoop at the twenty nine dollar hotel. You this. You that. You that. That's Gucci. Who Gucci is today. He doesn't do that, right. right? So that's I have a lane for that. I think people look at Gucci, they see how successful he is, how happy he seems to be, and they respect the fact that he doesn't really let him, himself get into any bullshit. And I think sometimes people look at you and they think, here's a guy who clearly has money, who has uh, successful businesses, and they almost expect you to be a little bit more Gucci Mane with it. Why do you um, <clears throat> expect me to be like another man when I'm my own man? I think that people just expect like once saying, you get to a certain level of success like that Malcolm you X, aren't going to be screaming at people on Clubhouse like all the time. That's like saying right? Malcolm X should be like Martin Luther King. The world needs Gucci Mane's. The world needs Wack 100's. Mm. The world needs Birdman's. The world needs Top Dogs. The world needed Dame Dashes. The world needed that shit. But that, that's the thing about a Birdman or a Top Dog or a Gucci is that they all are at a certain level where they're not going to argue or respond to people who are at a much, much what? lower level than and themselves. You have no qualms about that. And guess what? I've created a platform right. that when you come at us, we got a weapon to fight back with. See, one, it was one time, Adam. Let's keep it real. On my growth with me and my artists. I couldn't get to your table. Really? I would have really? always sat down with Wack. No, I could bullshit. Well, I couldn't even get my artists to your We've table. We've done like four or five interviews over the years. When your ass was over there fucking off of Santa Monica. Right. You shot me down two, three times. You asked me, well, we did the, the interview with Blueface. You remember he was eating the pretzels? Prior talking about, to that. Yeah, that was. I asked you for a few interviews. You wouldn't do them. Now watch right. this. So the very same, the things I started to do to create my own little social media lane, right, put me in a, in a situation, in a position where wax worth some views. Mm. Wax somebody that's is, is profitable to do some business with, right? Now, I say this again. There's no whack 100 from my neighborhood. My neighborhood doesn't identify with that. They know me as another name. But don't nobody get mad at Denzel or, or, or for playing this role. Nobody got mad at my boy uh, in Pulp Fiction for playing the man that got violated. You know what I'm saying? But then Ben Reigns will go play a motherfucker, kick a nigga ass in this. But then the baby boy plays this. But don't, listen, whack 100 is a social media entertainer. Are you acknowledging that you're acting when you're on Clubhouse or on No, air? I'm not acting. Well, they're I'm, acting. Van Rames no, is acting. Right? I'm being me, right? But so what I'm saying Denzel is... Denzel Washington, when he plays a role, is clearly not being himself. But, he's no, acting. But, 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 but he's entertaining. 
Right, but he's performing a role that was actually written for exactly. him most of the time. I'm authentic. So I'm being me. Right. Because if I take away the lane that I created for myself, right, ain't nobody else going to give me one. So who was these motherfuckers that tell me what I should or shouldn't be doing? I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't do that. I just think that's why sometimes people are surprised to see what you people? so deep in the bullshit. But what people? Uh, Clubhouse is a great thing. Even Gucci, man. It seems like that's what he's kind of getting at with that lyric, like, right? Gucci didn't mean no disrespect. And I responded to Gucci, man. Yeah. Promoting the song. Oh. Saw that. Dummies. <laughs> you caught it. Yeah. Everybody else is saying, Wax about to diss Gucci Mane. Mm -hmm. Wax with a diss Gucci Mane. Why is Wax going to get diss Gucci Mane? Because Gucci Mane name dropped his name in a song. What? I want to go hear it. Stream, stream, stream. Get paid, bro. Mm -hmm. He'll do the same for me. I can call Gucci and say, Gucci, I got this new artist, bro. Can you, can, you, can you touch this? You should call him right now. He'll do that for me. I deal with Gucci through my brother P. You know, I respect my boundaries. Okay. I call when I want to talk to Gucci. I call P. P. Make that happen. Mm. Okay. You know, because that was really my my real um, initiation to Gucci was through um, Coach K when he used to manage him. We were setting up a um, fight with Gucci and Game. Mm. When Gucci said he could whoop all the Gucci all the and Game were gonna fight was at one point. Get down. It was already locked. A in boxing contact. match. Money on the table. What year are we talking? One about? of them didn't clear the physical right before he <laughs> went to jail. Gucci and game, who didn't clear the physical? It was going to get out. It was going to get out. On Wait, what year are we talking? 2015, 16. Gucci was in great shape at that time, right? Yeah, game was too. He was Games running, he was running shape, Runyon right? Canyon every motherfucking day. Him and him and his brother Bird. Gucci was running at Runyon Canyon? No, Game was. Oh, Game was? But so Gucci went and set up a imagine. whole ring at his house. He was training. You've been to Runyon? It's like a fucking gay yeah, I went to, mall Yeah, I went to um, Runyon, and Game takes his fucking scenic route. Him and Bird, shout out to Bird. My man Bird. Um, and uh, I got to the top and fell out. I tried to get a helicopter to come get me. A helicopter? I was fucked up. It was that bad. It was that bad. What what hurt? Everything. Nigga, I felt like my motherfucking lungs was at right here. Cause he don't walk around, he gets halfway and he cuts through the fucking mountain and you fucking hike it and climbing and that shit was that shit was crazy. You been I felt though? like a little bitch for the first time because the women that go out there with him all the time, he goes like 20 deep. I'm surprised I, you would go there. It's, like, it's probably like 80% gay men over there. Well, what's wrong with it being gay men and Runyon Canyon? That's, they just... just doesn't seem like your vibe. Yeah, Runyon Canyon. Yeah, they're you, working out. You don't like gay people? I don't care. With you. I thought I was, you was gay, though. You was uh, you was making... uh, uh, You had interest in uh, the transgender man, Naughty. On my show. <laughs> I had interest in them. You wanted to see the, the motherfucking page. I wanted to see what page. they looked like. I wanted to see what your trans friend looked like. You want, I mean, Naughty is um, part of my um, 100 side. You know, hey, listen, they're people too. Right. Definitely. They're definitely you people. Know, they're people too. Shout out to Hayan. He's an openly queer man. My man Stevie uh, Nunez. I want you to have you know even more connections Shout in out. the gay community. So maybe we could go to, you want to go to Runyon and catch a workout? But this is the thing. I'm afraid if I we'll go see to some Runyon, over there, If I go to Runyon, right? And there's gay people at Runyon. Yeah. Okay. They're there doing what I'm doing. Right. So what's wrong with them being there? I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I you was just surprised phobia? the vibe might be kind of off for you. You got a phobia? No. You know what Eminem said? What? Clean out the closet. You know what I'm saying? You okay? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a heterosexual man that's, you know, I'm very sure about my manhood. So, so. you'd have no problem doing this podcast with me if I was gay? No, not at all. Well, that's good to know. In case I ever want to make that move, I don't okay. really see it happening though. Would you do a podcast with? A, would you do an interview with a gay person? I've done plenty of gay. I pods. got a guy named Ion. Yeah. How dare you? He eat your ass up. I got a guy named Destiny that I'm trying to get you on with. Who's that? The gay dude? He got a little gay streak, I think. Okay, so I do the I do the shit with your gay friend, and you do the podcast interview with my gay partner. Sure, I would there love you to meet Ion, your gay friend. Ion, yeah. Ion, Ion, fix my life. There it is, live and direct. Get ready. Get ready. I was the one that I had interview Yay. Right. He's seven feet, though. Don't fuck with him. He's seven feet tall. Seven feet tall. Seven feet. See, nope. that's the one thing I'm worried about is a gay man who is intimidating physically. No, he's cool. He's Ion. But he's not going to pull some booty warrior shit with me nah, and throw me against nah. the wall or nothing? All right. Ion, then I think we could get along. For one, you deal with women. Right. Ion, you know, um, since I've been on Clubhouse, you know, when you in the world, I realize, bro, you're dealing with all walks of life. 
So when I walk in certain places, I don't want to be shocked and like feel uncomfortable. So between Ion, between Naughty, between Stevie Nunez, people like that, they have kind of like taught me what the terminology means because I don't want to be talking and saying some shit that I, that's offensive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I might kill a deal or or just, you know, offend somebody. You know what I'm saying? Right. It may be my, you know, friends at the school or something, right? So they broke down what the alphabets mean and what's what Ion is, he's a queer man that the only men he deal with is men that have never deal with women. Mm. So if you're a man that deal with women, you're queer, he won't, he won't deal with you. Really? So That's a it. bisexual man is not of interest to him? No. Interesting. That's cool, though. I like but we that. We're going to set an interview. What's up with this, this KKX, KKK dude? My man, Captain Tazariat from the Hebrew Israelites. He wants to beef with One him West. on here. No, he want to debate. Ain't no beef, man. Well, listen, we. Not listen, beef, yeah. Listen, y'all always think black people got to come no, by. I, I know you wouldn't like, try to We can't that. outwit y'all. This is the thing is that. I'm a little bit standoffish about having any like former white nationalists or present white nationalists on the podcast just because it became such a shit Yo, that storm ain't got, last listen, time. Would you, but, but it would be cool for me to but this stand is the on and double down. Yeah. We had no representation. Right. So are you telling me you pulled a cowardice act Destiny, and did that without no Destiny representation? Destiny is the guy that I had with that. You thing. had no representation. We want representation. Politically, Politically yes. Racially, Zariot, no. One West is who we choose okay. as a people because he's a respectful man to have the debate. You can go to YouTube, put in Captain Tazaria One West. He's a re- respectful man. You know, it ain't about no fucking fight, no crazy shit. He's not a gang member or nothing. He's a father. He's a businessman. He's a husband. Like, if he turning down the fade and your guy is saying, I'm only uh, – comfortable with talking to white people because I'm intimidated by having a conversation no, no, no. with an educated black man say that. We'll I think that Richard w. Spencer would be happy to have a conversation Captain on camera with a Rich. black person. Rich, what are we doing, Rich? This this is my worry, is that if, we sit in. if I set up Richard Spencer versus some Hebrew Israelites, there are people out there who maybe don't respect the perspective of the Hebrew Israelites, and then they're going to say, oh, look, Adam set up Richard Spencer versus these no, guys Adam, who we don't well, care okay, for, Adam. and that might be a whole Watch other this. pot of gumbo. Watch this. Yeah. My guy is ready to go. Okay. He's asked me 10 times. Okay. We're willing to do it because we want proper representation. I don't even want to debate the guy because I don't have the knowledge when it comes to that type of stuff as Captain Tazaria. I feel you. Right? So this is whack asking to set this up on your platform. Mm-hmm. They can't put this on you. Right, but you have the reach to your guy. I, I mean, it doesn't sound like the worst idea to me, bro. It's never been done. I, I, I'm gonna hit Richard Spencer in the DMs. We're gonna see and if this, you we know, can make this happen. You got happen. information on, on the brother. Send it to him so he know what he's dealing with. Right, and I already sent him information on dude. I think I actually asked him and he agreed to it previously. I just kind of left it alone because it's been such a shit yeah. storm around here. No, no, we need to do that because that's something different. And the people want to see you got the conscious community. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know. I'm not too versed on uh, does the uh, white supremacists or ex-white supremacists, do they have, like, podcast shows that they, people watch it that they, they do? Because dude was a great speaker. I don't I think may he not has agree his with podcast, his but... idealism, but he's a great speaker, so I would think that, you know, maybe they had some set up to, you know. He might, honestly, but they probably don't let him on YouTube with it, so he probably it might be on some weird service Where, that I don't know that's about. That's what I'm saying. The people want to see it, so now you got – Two different communities. Listen, walk I like with it. me. I'll tap in. Two different communities. There you go. Okay, let's do it. Let me ask you this. Why were you pressing Doughboy on Clubhouse, and why did you say fuck him and Future? That was the highlight clip. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Once again, like, my response is always all they see and all they hear. Uh-huh. So uh, This all goes back to Future and you uh, allegedly getting into an altercation uh, at LAX. What was it? Yeah, you know, I got content I could have showed. I just let it go. But Rockstar from Hip Hop Trends right. calls me. I'm at home. Bro, what up? Hey, man, um, Doughboy is, is uh, coming to my room. You know, he's a rapper. You know, I want, to, want you to come in and, like, you know, build with him. Right. My first response is, who is that? Uh-huh. I didn't know who he was. Respectfully, right? He like uh, he one of Future's artists. That's all right, cool. So when I come in the room, they talking, they talking about songs. I guess he had a project coming out. I chimed in. I asked him, you know, hey, um, you know, what's your stage name? I go to Spotify and 
look him up. I said, oh, man, you got some pretty strong numbers. You know what I mean? So I'm listening to one of the songs, and he's like, hey, man, let me ask you a question. I'm thinking we building on some music. Mm-hmm. Yo, what's up with you and Pluto? Mm. I'm like, me and who? <laughs> right. Because Rockstar didn't ask me to come build with, you know, on some Rockstar's shit. a shit stirrer. He knew exactly what he was doing, don't you think? I don't know, because I don't know <laughs> the dude. Right. So, you know, I'm like, when he asked me again, you know, see, that's the problem. Dude, my son age. So why come from my era? When you ask me about me and another man business, that's like a form of attempting to check a man. Uh-huh. So off the rip, I'm going to tell him, man, don't ask me nothing about me and what we got going on. Right. Now, I didn't already got a call from one of my big brothers to leave that alone with Future. Okay. So I've been left it alone. I didn't talk about it. And I told him, I expressed that to him. Hey, bro, listen, I don't even want to discuss that. I got a call from bro. Leave that shit alone. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. But he was adamant to keep going on. So now I'm like, so Birdman could call me and say, whack, leave that alone out of respect to me. Future, my brother, this is exact words. Like, he my brother. I love him mm-hmm. as a brother, as a friend. Stun, I can respect that. So now his future telling him, yo, fuck whack it when you see him, get at him. But what I first got to do is extend my respect to Stunner. And I told him two, three times, like, bro, we got a mutual comrade that leave that alone. He kept going on. So then, okay, I'm going to give you what you're looking for. He thought I was out of town because everybody knew I was out of town. He didn't know I was back at mm. the studio. So you and I said, you in L.A.? Yeah, I said, well, where you at? You were trying to get Doughboy to pull up on you. No, I was going to pull you up because he was talking right. about, oh, homie, I like the face-to-face and all this crazy shit. So Rockstar was on his way to my studio that night. Uh-huh. I said, well, Rockstar, this your man. You with him in L.A.? Yeah. Well, go get him. Pull up. So like, Rockstar tell me when he got off the phone, he like, yo, that's a real address? He was like, yeah, that's a real address. We're going to come get you. Nah, nah, I'm cool. So you did all that for what? But another nigga gained off the clout. I just had... The homie last night, Munchie B from Inglewood said, "Wack, well, I ain't gonna lie, cause he's Munchie blind, he lost his eyesight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I ain't gonna lie, that nigga won, cause I didn't know who the nigga was. I learned who he was and started listening to his music when y'all got into it. Clout. Wait, when I got into it with him? No, when me and this dude, whatever, what's the nigga name? Doughboy. Doughboy, right? Right. Guess they tell me from like uh, Ohio. Or something. So now you're listening to Doughboy. No, he's a talented. No, rapper. not me. I've never. Oh, okay. I just went to preview one of his songs that night because okay. Rockstar asked me to come to the room. I, I didn't come over there thinking it was going to be a problem. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe Rockstar did know some shit. But once again, I don't know. Don't get mad at me, bro, for, for coming in peace and then responding to a war uh-huh. and going to war. I just wanted to know the origin story of how that ended up sparking know, off nigga. there. You know what I'm saying? He know me now. I know him, and it's whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing this too long. It turned back now. It's going to go how it go. Right. Okay. But the future beef is on the back burner? Stunner asked me to silence myself. <laughs> so I did. He called me since then. Stunner? Yeah. Really? It's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Look, man, I'm not, bro, I got certain people I respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and if they come to me, I'm a I'm a I'm a honor that out of pure respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. It's not no. It occurs to me that I don't have that control over you. That I couldn't say, "Hey, stop, stop beefing with this person." Well, you Adam twenty two, <laughs> right? But you could. Though. I'm not Birdman. But you could though. Could I? Do you I could. have like a certain number of passes? I told you, man, your security guard, right? I right. said, look, brother, always know this. I mean, no disrespect. I've been here six, seven times. You work for Adam. So me and you could never have any problems out of respect to Adam. Mm-hmm. And this is real shit. Right. I know that's your, your man. Like, I, he, you know, I see him all the time. So I'm going to respect that. Uh-huh. Regardless of what it is, we're going to acknowledge what you talk about, what it got to be. Did he give you guys a hard time getting in here? No, he just does his job. Okay. Cool. He does yeah. his job. You got a good man at the door. Well, we had a situation recently where a young Chicago rapper tried to come in here with the Blick, and uh, he tried to offer to hold it for him. They turned that down, and then 
Well, I won't. I won't go too into detail, but yeah, I got a little, a little spicy for a second. Yeah, well, you know, you got a good, you got a good doorman, and he's good business. I just wanted to let him know when, when I'm just engaging the conversation with you, I'm just trying to get understanding. But understand, I do know you work for Adam. You've been with Adam. You're here for Adam. So out of respect for that, all it's gonna be is a conversation. But do you move around alone at all? Because usually when oh. you come up in here, you got a couple of people with you. I keep five with me, a couple outside, a couple. You know, it's a block. It's that serious. I mean, you know, it's what it is. Uh huh. This is a, this is a hostile building. Is it? Yeah, this motherfucker's a melting pot. Ah, once in a blue. And out of respect to you, uh huh. It was AD at first. Uh huh. And AD pushed such a hard line for you that people just start naturally, organically respecting you. That's why a lot of shit don't happen up here. Damn. So I got my whole street rep off of him. You motherfucking right. Hmm. I gotta thank him for don't, that. Bro, I'm gonna send him a bro, thank you bro, card. Look, Adam, listen, <laughs> sometimes, bro, it's real shit. It ain't even about no ego shit and no shit like that. Like when AD, when when you um let AD through the door, a lot of motherfuckers honored you for that, respect you, but like, damn, we really gave him one of us a shot. Right. And then A D, because of the love you showed him, when that was going on, let us know I stand with that man. It occurs to me that you being here consistently could pot- potentially have the opposite effect, where maybe people would hold it against me to some extent. Although no. certainly some people would be that's happy not about happen it. Because you got people that's in this building that everybody want to get. You got a motherfucker in this building who got a whole motherfucking tribe crossed off. You think they yeah. don't know where this building at? You had one used to work here. Mm-hmm. But let's be real. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Do you think me messing with Crip Mac that hard is a bad idea? No, I told you when you asked me that, I said, do I think he has what he had a year or two ago? No. But would I give him a shot at doing it when he coming on this time? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You'll be a fool not to. You couldn't uh, do business with him? Who? Crip Mac. Um, I would help him with his business through certain people. Uh-huh. 600, Big Bruce. You know, and 600 was to call me like, yo, whack. You know, we're trying to do this. I know you got the plug. I'm going to get at the 600. If 600 wished to use that for him, then so be it. Uh-huh. Even if he told me he was doing that, I wouldn't trip because I'm going to think about I'm helping 600. Okay. Yeah, so I try to do business with the man. I try to give him $100,000. Right. We, last time Crip Mac was here, he kept telling me he was snungry. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know what that's distance because <laughs> Yeah, you do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, he didn't want to say the H. I just wanted to get your reaction. No, that. I didn't think I had to. <laughs> that's think a good one though, it. right? He's very creative. Yeah, like that shit crazy. <laughs> I noticed him not using the uh like certain gang slurs on here though. He'll actually call him who he won't say the other thing. So oh, that, that shows right. some growth, right? That's here, definitely. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay. Couple more things on here, and maybe one day we'll have just like a casual conversation about things that don't concern us. But did you see? Um, there was a big uh, Juneteenth celebration in Lamert Park. <laughs> I want to bet on that five hundred. What was the fight, or what was the bet? Well, they said whack Juneteenth. This this Lamert Park. Um, would you go support? I said absolutely not. That's not somewhere where you would feel safe, or what? Here goes the real reality. Any con- any large group of black people um, that are gang members, mm-hmm. no matter what the cause is for, when you get a mix, no matter if it's women and children there and it's Juneteenth, it's supposed to be symbolic for the day slaves, was, slaves are actually free. Mm-hmm. They're going to act their ass. And with acting the ass comes the risk of your life or your freedom or your possible involvement of of doing something to an innocent person. Meaning shooting starts and shooting get to going back and you got a little kid hit or a lady hit, innocent person hit, mm-hmm. right? The only time that I would might possibly think about attending an event like that is if the NOI or the FOI was directly involved. The who? Nation of Islam or the Fruit of Islam uh, okay. was directly involved because <clears throat> in my past 20 odd years, I've noticed when I've utilized them for events like that, people tend to respect their presence. Mm. The LAPD could be right outside. They'll still do some crazy shit. Right. 
the little bullshit security with the fake badge. They don't care about them. Mm. But if the fruit of Islam is on deck, the nation of Islam has a presence. People tend to not do bullshit. Okay, but the video of the people trashing the McDonald's and stealing the cash register. Bunch of bullshit. I mean, it looked like probably like a 13-year-old kid who took the cash register out of there. Why is it happening? Yeah. And you want people to respect this day. It just seems so overwhelmingly disrespectful to the people who are putting on the event and trying to do something good for the community. It's kind of sad to think that people would be so callous about something that seemed like such a positive thing. And I'm sure it was 99% of it, but then there's like one shooting and then there's the McDonald's getting trashed and that kind of soils the image of the whole thing, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was even, uh, my friend Khalil, he was putting up some stories talking about how like, you know, at some point, this kind of event, they would want to get sponsors, that kind of thing. That's presumably not going to be easy to do when the event has a reputation of wild ass shit happening. All right, bro. Um, you got to make decisions on what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. I'm not going uh, bungee jumping, skydiving. I'm not going snorkeling. I'm not doing none of that shit because I'm eliminating the possibility of something happening, Mm. right? And I've been living long enough to know and understand that when you go into a prison yard style setup, something could happen. But you feel like that was a prison yard style setup? I thought that would seem like a nice community event, right? Well, you're in the middle of the neighborhood, you're in the middle of... Is that a wild ass area for the most part in general? I'm not really sure what the reputation is these I mean, days. It is what it is. It's like Crenshaw, like 42nd. It is? Okay. Did you have any thoughts about the video of uh, YNW Melly snitching, allegedly, back in the day? Oh, he definitely snitched. You're right. But yeah, I had thoughts. Uh, my thought was uh, targeted at <clears throat> law enforcement, the police station, the district attorney's office, as well as whoever the... the um, Chief of police is, I'm going to tell you why. You think they leaked that footage? Yeah, because you you, think, you had an Instagram post so saying that they're trying think. to get him killed. Listen, listen. What's public record is public record. Mm. Paperwork is public record unless you got a 5K1 or some shit, CO5. We can't see it. <clears throat> but this is why when we see proper downward departure 5K1, <clears throat> we know you told because that's why they're going to sell it. Okay? That video mm. happened in an interrogation room. Nobody has access to that but the police department and or detective and or the district attorney. Now, if this video would have been played or shown during a trial, no big deal Could because now it's, it's public record. Mm-hmm. But right when they're saying we can't identify what gun was used, who what gun killed him, right when they're saying we're throwing out the lyrics, mm-hmm. Um, right when I believe the mother-in-law says she was kind of forced into saying whatever she was saying about a DA, right? You released that. But now this 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 young man or this man is incarcerated. So now they know what happens or what could possibly happen to a snitch. He's still in jail. Mm-hmm. That situation has nothing to do with this situation. Right. So you just, in a way, conspired to the possible harm of this man because you released this. You had this. Like, if I, if I, right, go do something that led to you getting attacked, they're going to book me. I don't give a fuck if the dude say, yo, what's up with that bitch-ass nigga Adam? What's their address? And I sent him the address? And they come do something to you, right. and they catch them and find that phone. I got conspiracy, mm. right? So, what makes them above the law? The question is, why did you release that to social media, law enforcement? So, law enforcement is the only way that that could get released. Uh, where's the interrogation room held at? Because I just keep seeing like more and more of this interrogation room footage getting released of all from? kinds of people. Where you think it's coming from? I don't know. I feel like there's probably just fans out there unearthing the shit. Nah, fuck out of here. You don't buy that? Fan, get interrogation room footage. I don't know. You can't, like, submit, like, a a form trying to get your hands on this kind of shit? 
Because I've seen it happen with a lot of people, a lot of like Chicago rappers and stuff, where I'm just seeing like random ass footage of them having conversations with cops, and I'm like, how the fuck is this shit getting unearthed? What a nightmare. They're releasing it. Yeah. They're above, they're thugs. <laughs> they're thugs. Mm. They're releasing it. <laughs> okay. They're releasing it. Shit. They're like, come on, bro. I mean, we don't have to go too long. If here, they really found like, out <laughs> that I gave this guy the address to go do something, right? Mm -hmm. And that dude went over there and did something to you, right? I'm going to have to get in court and prove y'all gave him the address, but I didn't know what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. You gave him the address. You know this guy. How long you know this guy? You know he's a gang member? Did he ever uh, um, express any uh, ill feelings or, uh, or distaste towards Adam? So your money is on Melly beating these charges? Yeah, I think he's going to beat it. Yeah, that would be great. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to... Get him attacked, and they trying to fuck up his character. The kids ain't going to give a fuck about them being a snitch. Mm. Wow. Um, okay. I think we could probably leave it at that. I got some other stuff I could bring up, but maybe we could just yeah, let it rock scared, for next you're scared, week. Bro. You know, you're scared. No, it's just the other stuff I have on, on the docket here just seems like it might take so long that maybe we could save it for what, next week. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, what's a little weird, though? Uh, American Bozo. Oh, you're still beefing with him. Wasn't the beef. I just knocked on the door to have a conversation with him. When I figured out, I don't know this bozo, this coward. I don't know this motherfucker. How'd you get his address? Huh? How'd you get his address? <laughs> the photo of you holding your phone up, knocking on his door, was pretty iconic. I wasn't recording. I was on Clubhouse. Oh, okay. Because I don't want him to lie and say he was out there saying this and saying that and saying this. You can get rid of the audio on your motherfucking ring. And make the story what you want. I heard him saying this. That shit was being recorded on Clubhouse. But so it doesn't right. mean anything to you that he made a video sort of waving the white flag and saying that he doesn't want to take this shit any further? I never seen I, that I video. That, you didn't see the that? The only video I seen is him trying to get me attacked. Really? Rasa Unite. This dude, Whack 100, he clout chasing uh -huh. about uh, uh, Lupe. Right. He don't give a fuck about Lupe. Lupe a crip. They don't give a fuck about Lupe like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, Lupe motherfucking mama house burned down. I don't even fuck with her like that, but I'm a human. I donated $1,000. Where the fuck was he? What, you know what he said? He said, she's a crip. That ain't our... That ain't our but our, I thought that that was a fake uh, account that was saying that. Who? That he didn't actually say, I'm not going to help her out. She's with well, a black well, gang or whatever. Well, 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 he didn't help her out. The motherfucking link was up. Right, but I don't, I don't, you know, me and Lupe ain't never. The narrative I heard was that Crip Mac got trolled into believing that American Cholo said something negative about Lupe being from a Crip gang or whatever, but it was actually a no, fake. I always account. making up excuses for everybody else. I ain't heard a person make excuses for me. Well, I mean, if it's true, but let's it's true, get right? back to it. You involving yourself in some shit and trying to create a lie. The word Home Depot is never motherfucking racial disrespect. Right, but you said some shit about roaches on the floor and you'd be working at Home Depot. It's obvious that Listen, you're inferring that she's like a day laborer are, are who hangs you, out in the Home Depot parking lot, right? Nope, that's not what I was referring to. Really? See, because y'all shallow-minded, <laughs> right? First of all, I'm strong on women staying out of man business. Mm. And I didn't told Lupe 10 times on that app, lady, I don't know you. I know you fuck with Crib Mac or whatever, but you's a female. I don't want to talk to you about nothing, mm -hmm. Right? So when I told her, won't you go to motherfucking Home Depot then? When you go to Home Depot parking lot, what you find? What you find for dead laborers? A bunch of Mexican dudes looking for work. Mexican who? Dudes. So I'm telling More her, since you want to act like a fucking man, take your ass to motherfucking Home Depot where the men at and go to work. Uh -huh. He takes the shit and turns it into something racial. It's nothing racial about fucking um, Hispanics picking up work at Home Depot. I've never, I know every dish. <laughs> okay. There's, There's nothing racial about, about Hispanics that. looking for work at the Home Depot. I mean, you just said it's Hispanics. Not it's, not a, it's not a stereotype I, of white or black people, Bro, right? this is not a stereotype. This is a real hustle. Right, and we all respect it. Anybody who has created, right, and marketed themselves, minus social media, minus fucking uh, billboards, just through word of mouth to all races, if you need labor, you can go find it between the hours of 6 a.m. and noon at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Right? I commend that person. For sure. Right? I use them all the time. 
So by me telling Lupe, hey, yo, stay out of man business. You always open your motherfucking mouth when men are talking, right? Won't you take your ass in that Home Depot parking lot? Mexican bozo, American cholo, whatever this motherfucker is, <laughs> he takes it and runs it. He's a bitch. Jeez. Let me tell you why. When he did that clip on me, talking about all Rasa, let's unite against WAC 100, that means something to me. Mm. I heard something different. What'd you hear? I heard, nigga, you trying to rally up the troops to attack me. Uh -huh. So what I did was show your Rasa, he's a bitch. Don't follow a bitch. Because if I know where you at, I could have went over there hunted deep. He came over here hunted deep, didn't he? Maybe 40, but, you yeah. know. Right? So, because he knew where y'all was at, right? He came 40 deep, right? Uh -huh. So I knew where he was at. I could have went 40 deep, right? But I didn't. When I seen he was 0 0.3 miles away from my studio, and you on here talking about all Rasa, why your bitch ass didn't come down to my studio and holler at me? So American Bozo, what I'm going to do is show you how a man does it. I told him I was coming. If he unblocks my IG, on his DMs, we're talking to each other. I told him, is this your address? I'm going to come holler at you. Uh -huh. I told him I was coming. As a man, you trying to summon, there's some people love me like some people probably love him. All oh, that shit going to lead to his explosion. And for what? Because you clout chasing? So I knocked on your door. His people then told him, go run the fade. Go. He was there? I was zero point. He, he was in there. Oh, shit. I'm 0 0.3 miles away. I went over there four times. Four times? Four times. His podcast is in the backyard in the motherfucking garage. How much time between you going there each time? Um, Multiple days? Or just... No, same day. Oh, Jesus. Because I'm like, yo, bro, you on this live, come outside. Holler at me. Uh-huh. For the record, I thought bringing Diddy this up said, that, wait, that but y'all ain't got nothing I, I, to I say. I thought wait, that wait. we would maybe be hold doing on. some healing hold here. On, so this bro. is different hold energy on, than I thought it was going to be. On, just bro. for the record, he went up and said, "Whack, I'm on my way to your studio at this address." I didn't get mad. None of y'all said nothing to him. I waited. He didn't show up. Y'all gonna say something to him about he, we planning? I didn't put his address up. That's good. But you know what happened? His bitch ass and left me alone. I ain't no motherfucking podcaster, dude, bro. He put it out there like he just didn't want to be the person that sparked a big ass war between what war groups. All the Rasa could respect that man went over there by himself. I'm very capable of moving with masses. I went by myself. The essays I grew up with. Hey, Holmes, you said some shit to him, insinuate you wanted the people to attack him. I came to holler at you by myself. You the one seen to have a problem with me. But he saw it was real, and one thing he knows is what? I know where you at like you know where I'm at. Fair exchange, no robbery. Right. It's going to be what it's going to be. So you're not in the mind state of squashing shit with... AC. Squashing what? I'm, I'm 46 years old, bro. What would have to happen to make this situation start to get better? He continued to do what he did my last 46 years. But he dropped a video basically saying that he wanted to kind of leave it in the past. Leave what? That's cool. Then shut the fuck up. Leave my name out your mouth and go your way. Okay. Now, if I see you in public and you say something to me, we going to handle it. What are the odds of you seeing him? I mean, I don't know. Right. I'm everywhere. Uh, am I looking for him? No, I know where he at. He, he's the one initiated that. Who initiated that? Who the fuck initiated the whack 100 American bozo shit? Well, he would probably say you by making these comments about. I Home never said. I didn't even know who he was. I did not know who American bozo was. They like yo whack American bozo. Did I'm like who the fuck is that? I don't be knowing these people, bro. I said who was that? They showed me the clip. I respond. Right. When I figure out where he at, 
you know he know where I'm at because the world know my address. So you know I'm 0.3 miles away from you. But you do what you do. Basically neighbors. Why you didn't come pull up, holler at me. But when I found out your address, I pulled up to holler at you. I didn't say, hey, all Crips, Bloods, all Blacks, Muslims, my nation is Islam, we need to whoop. I didn't do none of that shit. He did. Mm-hmm. That's a threat. Is it not? Sounds kind of threatening. Yeah, yeah so, you so. know, if he's going to let it go, that's cool. Leave me the fuck alone. Okay. Clout chase off my name, and you know when clout chase go wrong. Right. But for the record, WAC 100 has nothing against the Mexican community. Man, I'm from Bacoima, bro. I grew up eating mole fighting roosters. <laughs> Actual we'll roosters. whoop your motherfucking ass if you fuck Two with Two different Bacoima. kinds of roosters on this part. real shit. Right. I'm like this in life. I fuck with who fuck with me. Fuck who say fuck me. Crip, blood, Mexican, race, whatever, Asian, whatever, gay, non-gay, whatever. You got love for WAC, WAC got love for you. Right. You cordial with WAC, WAC cordial with you. Right. I don't, that's just how I operate. People are people. Why did you say that Boosie was set up by a Crip? He was. We exposed him. Who Content was? is on Clubhouse. Who was it? What's his name? Uh, some dude named uh, P some shit. He was. We exposed him. Baited him into the room. But now we're seeing that he allegedly got picked up by the feds because he was uh, having a gun in his waistline in an Instagram Live clip, right? That's the motherfucker who Instagram Lived him. Oh, okay. So you're blaming the person who put it on live. The same motherfucker. We pulled his work, and he's a CI. Sealed documents. Downward departure 2016. You want to see paperwork? Uh, I got these letters to the judges and everything. I got the shit where he telling the motherfucker, dude, I don't want to go to court uh, well, my confidential. Listen, man, I got all this shit downward departure right here. Right, right. Got the letter to the judge stamped, Alondre Dickerson's, uh-huh. dear judge, Cynthia Bashat. I got it where he says right here, bro. Playing this fucking day, he says, I don't want to go to court on the same date as any of my co-defendants. Signed right there. Uh huh. We pulled his work. You know where that come from? Mickey motherfucking truth. Mm. That quick. In four minutes, he came on Clubhouse. I didn't know who had the camera. I said, whoever working that camera's working. And I'm going to tell you why. When you got a camera and a man got a gun as small as his back, you, you don't put the camera on that. Go on the fucking live or whatever you're doing, right? Especially if he's got felonies now, and whatnot. Out of everybody there, they're on your live. You got 3,000 motherfucking viewers. He had 3,000 viewers? He got 3,000 followers, whatever. Oh. Now, at this time, listen, at this time, I don't know who it is. I go to Rockstar Room. I say, yo, ever working that camera? Working. Uh Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Whoever working that camera's working. I don't give a fuck. Rockstar say, hey, it's this dude. um, He says the name. uh, KP2. Uh, market made. It's KP2 market made. I say, wherever KP2 market made, wherever that is, he's working. It's a dude on the floor say, hey, whack, that's my family. I said, Joe family, my family, I don't give a fuck who family it is. He working. So you automatically assume that he was doing this on behalf of the, the law enforcement? Off the rip. Because he was on live capturing this. Well, a little deeper than that. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. When Bootsy left there, when I seen the pictures, it identified the gun in his back. Then he had Bootsy in the front, identifying as Bootsy and what he had on. Mm-hmm. Police say they pulled over the vehicle that's not registered to Bootsy, right? Or running a red light. There's no probable cause to pull the driver of Bootsy out to cuff him for running a red light. Mm. That's a he sus. had a PC, a probable cause search warrant, mm. which got to come from the judge or his higher ups. The only way they're going to issue that is if he's telling them, we have a reliable source that this is coming from. Now, at the time, I don't know about his sealed documents. I said whoever was working that shit is a motherfucking rat because whoever's working it has the credibility, right, for law enforcement to get a PC warrant. It's a probable cause warrant Mm -hmm. to search, handcuff and search, right? 
when they bring him in the room, we like, yo, where you from? What's this? I got my trolls in there pulling the shit. They pulling the shit. He don't know I'm just stringing him. Mm-hmm. I can show you the motherfucking text right here from Mickey Truth. I'm gonna show you this text, mm-hmm. right? We get like eight minutes into this shit, right? We get eight minutes into this shit, right? Four twenty-five p.m. What does it say? Sealed work on dude. You said send it. He said, "Okay, it's a big indictment. Indictment includes prostitution of minors." And then there's a bunch of different. So all the sealed, the downward departures, everything there. He sent you his cash out too. Oh. Oh yeah, that's Mickey. I pay her. <laughs> You paid for the info? Yeah, what the oh, fuck do you mean? I mean she it's just time, paid. I guess, yeah. You see what it is? It's called Mickey Truth. I Mickey gotta, Truth is the yeah. truth. That quick. She found him, pulled it, that's what it is. And I got, look, that's the letter to the judge. She even found his letter to the judge. That's his letter to the judge. Right. Where he said, I don't want to go to court with my co-defendants. This is his... Um, but what, why is that such an indictment of him? The, the only reason he wouldn't want to go to court with his co-defendants is because he was snitching? <laughs> What you mean? Why, why else would you want to go to court? Yeah. Judge, please, you please, I, I don't want to go to court by co-defendants. Damn. It's looking kind of grim for Boosie. You think he's going to really do like 10 years? Um, This is the problem. Mozzie just had the same thing. He went to the state, beat it. They dropped it. Feds picked it up. Mozzie did a year. Why? Mozzie didn't have never done any prison time. Mm. The thing about the feds, you're going to have a case but how they sentence you, your sentencing guidelines is going to be based on your prior criminal record. Boosie has a criminal record. Mm. That's the difference between Mozzie and Boosie on this shit. Same thing, just a gun. Nothing on the gun. But because Boosie's been to prison, I don't know, once, twice, that's going to put him in a different tier. Right. For his time bracket. Damn. Well, you're doing the Lord's work by finding out that shit. Because that actually seems pretty important. Yeah, uh, we still going to, I still ain't running content. Mickey Truth going to do a live. Actually, no, Mickey Truth just did a live yesterday. Go to Mickey Truth page on YouTube. She just did a full live, broke down Bootsy's paperwork on this case where the police officers said they were on his live. Right. Why the fuck are they on your live? How do they know to be on your live? Yeah, especially if you don't have. How do everybody 3,000 followers? I Three mean, th- yeah. How do they know to be on your live? That's crazy. It ain't no motherfuckers running around with motherfucking cameras and their medallions and shit. I forgot to bring this up earlier, but was there a, a a moment in this whole American Cholo beef where you accused him of something very bad and then had to kind of recant it because I you had realized to recant shit. The dude accused him of that. Whoever this Mexican dude, what's the dude name? I don't know. Y'all know the dude. Ain't the fuck podcast dude. I'm not sure. Huh? Someone someone else in his community put it on him. Yeah. They put it on him. Hold on. Yeah, the podcast will do. But you kind of posted saying that you now don't believe that it was real, right? No, I'm just, I just put up what he put up. Wasn't my content. <laughs> yeah. He, what my but content? if you're going to put paperwork like that on somebody, no, then I it's got to be. I didn't put no work. I never had to work. Don't watch this. This your man, right? Gunner, that's his name. Gunner is the YouTuber who, I'm who show you made these Adam. accusations, I guess. Yeah, Gunner. I got him in my phone. Okay. Gunner, essay. This motherfucker lied. Y'all watched him lie, right? And said, hey, WAC 100 called me telling me about this paperwork. I seen that lie, right? What that say, bro? WAC, this is Gunner. Hit me back. I got the paperwork on American Trolo right now. You said, where's it at? Uh, then the later that day, you said, yo, what's the doc number so we can pull all the work? My people saying that they don't see what you're reading. I got to fight this with you. My platform is bigger, and you can come to this room now. And then it looks like he just ghosted you. So who called who? And then you said, you're weird as fuck. When you called me, you knew the knock on the door happened, you fucking coward. Oof. So who called who? Who contacted who? He got in touch with you, I guess, yeah. Like, bro, Damn. see, one thing about whack, I'm going to give you the shit. Mm-hmm. That's it, bro. But just given how important exposing people's paperwork to is to your brand, he never. You seen what I said? Send the motherfucking docket but number. Ten ninety Jake would not have put this out about American Cholo unless he had verified the authenticity of the accusation, right? Fuck ten ninety Jake. All I did, Gunner did a clip. He's a bitch. 
that's a little porky pig. Right. We don't respect that, dude. But you should. Well, I, I, I love Jake. Listen, but... I couldn't put no work out because he never sent the docket. Right. Gunner did a clip reading some work. Right. Gunner did a clip. We just simply played the clip on Clubhouse. Uh huh. Okay. That's it. All right. I see where you're coming. So the next day, he recants and says, Yeah, whack the one called me with this and told me he had the paperwork. Well, you may have called him, but I'm not going to see that by looking at your text messages. Hey, bro. Uh, are you stupid? <laughs> Read the motherfucking shit. Okay. Hit, hit me back. I got the pa- He know. says what? Whack. This is. Hit me back. I got the paperwork. You said, where's it at? There could have been phone calls within this, is all I'm saying. No, motherfucker. I don't know this nigga. Look, look. Keep. Look. Yeah. The, he, all the history is him getting at me. He was hitting you in April. I don't even know how the fuck he got my number. Look, bro. Right. Did you see any correspondence? No, but this is just text. It might have been on the phone, but I'll give you the better. I don't better know that dude, bro. Right. I don't know that dude at all. I don't know it. Then they tell me a dropout. I ain't even know that. Mm. I don't know that. I don't be doing this, dude. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, what else? You got any more questions? I mean, I think that's huh? pretty solid. What's up? <laughs> the energy has kind of changed in here. Nah, He's I'm getting a little aggressive you. now. <laughs> Yo, but I mean, but club, the clubhouse streets been kind of crazy. Yeah. It's been kind of crazy. It's been kind of crazy. It's been, it been going going up over there. Yeah, I'm staying the fuck out of there. Well, you always had a good time on my platform. One time. You would protect you. Like, what you mean? Yeah. No, nobody fuck around on my platform. Right. When we call people when to do interviews, that's just what it is. It's just if I sit on Clubhouse for two hours, it's basically going to be me doing we, exactly what we just we did, but need for, you for free. two hours. Well, okay, for instance. But I mean, people seem like they're they on there for say, hours and look, hours okay, and hours. Okay, watch this. They may say, yo, whack, man, we seen the interview that Adam did, and we got some questions off some of the shit he said. So I may say, all right, Adam, bro, come pull up on me like 15, 20 minutes. They got questions on your content. I'm not getting shit done in 15, 20 minutes on Clubhouse because there's a million motherfuckers no, peppering you with no, questions they're not. from not on my fucking direction. platform. You're a fucking lie. Mm. Not, on, not on the hunt side. Mm. It's going to be designated people to ask you those questions. Hey, we seen the interview with you and such and such, and you made the comment of this. Can you elaborate on that? Because we kind of... Felt like you meant this, 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 and that. No, boom, boom, boom. Get it out the way you go. Kevin Gates, Kanye, been everybody didn't been over. But you know what I've learned is, but these are people who don't make money off of making content online. If I do a podcast and I say something and somebody wants to react, respond, I could always hop on my Instagram story and just respond to them. I'm going to wait until the next time I'm on here and then I'm going to respond to them because really I'm just trying to get people to tune in, right? But you may not even be paying attention to the shit that they want to ask you. Because yeah. once you got it up, you just got it up. Hey, what do you, what do you think of this taco? Nice what up? You think that, that's a good looking taco? Yeah, I, that's their ear taco? Well, I post. I don't <laughs> fuck with no ear taco. <laughs> I posted an Certain Armenian taco, and now the meme, the Mexican meme pages are on my ass for. Oh, Armenian taco. Well, an Armenian woman made it for me. My my, my girl's sister. Is that sister. the one with the ear? I seen some ear taco shit. Ear taco? Yeah, no, I just, can't fuck with like that. Carnitas. You see what I'm talking about? It was some ear taco. Hey, yo, bro. What the fuck is the update on the sub, bro? See, this is why I don't fuck oh, with the, the water. Submarine. I don't fuck with the water. I don't do no Damn. cruise ships. I do not. Human beings, we're dumb as fuck. We only know, what, about 8% of the shit in there, so we say it, which I don't know how we got that percentage because we don't know what's all in there to gauge the percentage. The crazy part is that they're probably not dead. They probably have like 24 hours, and they're just slowly dying in that sub down there. Well, this is the thing. When you get so deep, they've been dropping because uh-huh. they're not lodged anywhere, I think we would have seen them. When you get so fucking deep, mm-hmm. we our subs can only go so deep. I saw a scientist on Twitter saying that if we were able to send a rescue crew to rescue the submarine, it wouldn't be enough time. To get it them is out. so improbable, so unlikely that they would be able to pull this off. He said it would be more impressive than us having landed on the moon. So basically, they are fucked because we can't pull them up. It's just way too deep. And now the idea of the doing thing. a rescue mission on a submarine that's this that is my deep thing, right? is just nuts. This is my thing. And I'm confused. Was this some sightseeing shit? Yes. They, see, basically. this is some bullshit. There's some rich why, white dudes who just wanted to see Why some shit. do yeah. you want to go see a wrecked ship, the Titanic, Yeah, where a lot of people died on this shit? Man, let well enough alone, bro. I feel you. In general, though, that's white people. Don't shit, we bro. have to respect the explorers? Them your people. I bet ain't no black people on there. 
I don't think so. Yeah, they ain't fucking with that. Mm. There's some rich black people in this world. We can afford that shit. Right. We ain't doing it. Maybe one day. Nah, it ain't gonna This happen. is probably going to set back the whole rich guys going down into the sea with the nah, submarine universe. And then they, I guess they gave the stepson or somebody because he went to a fucking uh, <laughs> Blink-182 Blink concert. Blink-182 concert. He's trying to get pussy on Twitter. He's hollering at porn stars saying, hey, my dad's in a sub dying. Let me fuck. He said that? This is real. Yes. He might be burned out, This bro. motherfucker's a menace. He might be burned out. Yeah, I mean, he's got something wrong with him. Adam, so you telling me that I can't, you can't come visit the honey side on the morning show one time? I'll do whatever, yeah. 15, 20 minutes, oh, man, you know? Yeah, sure. You know, we always been love over there with us. Yeah, you know no what I'm saying? Man. The morning show. God, you got a morning show, I got a night morning show. show. You got all kinds of shows. It runs 24-7 over there. Yeah, that's a problem for me. Why? I'm trying to conserve my energy. I don't want you over there 24-7. <laughs> You want me to do a 24 hour fucking club morning? No. <laughs> I'm saying pull up on the morning show. You know what I mean? 15, right. 20 minutes. You know, they're going to have a little segment and that's it. Shit, that's what it is. Yeah, I can do a They segment. fuck with you over there, though. I like I like giving fuel to all the random YouTube channels that are just making content out of the clubhouse content. Now I'm glad you're keeping it real. Because everybody that was talking that shit, what clubhouse, clubhouse? But motherfucker, your content on a daily, at least four days out of the week, is your content and our content. Mm. A lot of people, yeah. Your content and our shit. You, I don't see you do it, but I see academics do it all the time. You're talking about what we talk about on Clubhouse. Let me ask you this: Are Twitter Spaces ops? No, nah, I don't. I went over there. That's just whack. That shit. But it's the same technology. No, it ain't. Only like eight people. Oh, really? There's talk. a limit. Yeah, you know, I can put. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll be having a thousand people. Because in, in the poker world, Twitter Spaces are huge. They they forgot about Clubhouse. They're just doing the Twitter Space thing. I'm not in there, but I hear about it. You only only uh only eight people or twelve people. So you know, um people that's getting ran off a of clubhouse, uh, we got a um uh stinky booty lady, fake barber <laughs> named Kim Cuts. Stinky booty lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, smell the booty or you just hear nah, rumors? She can't control her gastro. You know, she got a fucked up surgery and she got she can't control her bowels, but she she over there hollering and screaming and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, she mad because they booted her ass off. But you got to pull up, man. We got another side called The Trenches. Uh huh. You know, shout out to The Trenches over there. If I go in your clubhouse room, Rockstar is going to have a goddamn heart attack because he's been trying to get me to go to the first hip-hop of all, trends Rock, for first a while. First of all, let's keep it real. You've been, you been to my clubhouse room. True, true. I've been to ago. Trolls Worldwide or whatever the fuck no, it's called. No, Trolls Nation. That's Trolls what I was Nation. Trolls Nation. You've been to my clubhouse room. Um, I help Rockstar. I, you, Rockstar got low numbers. I go over there, drive traffic over there, I look out for him. Beef. So at the end of the day, what, what you doing with Wack is Rockstar couldn't fight that. The fuck? Right. We've been doing this before he was on Clubhouse. I was listening to Rockstar on there one time, and I and he noticed me in the fucking viewer thing. Like, he could view that I was viewing it, and he's like, Adam, get on here. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I thought I was incognito listening to this shit. Well, you know, it's, you know we on the hunter side, hunter side of the trenches. You know right. what I mean? It is what it is. We'll set some up. I'll make sure it's right, you know, when they want to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, this was some fiery content. I'm interested to see what happens after this gets released. Hopefully we can get it up by Oh, it's going to be on. Yeah. But I know one thing. Uh, make sure that ex Klansmen don't turn this debate fade down with Captain Tazari out, bro. Okay. I'm going to tap in with him. I mean, if, if, if he's scared of the black man, let me know. I don't think he's scared. It's just if, a debate. If I assure him that intellect- it'll be safe, it'll be good. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but the more familiar with you that he gets, the more likely he is to say no. When he sees you knocking that white dude out in the parking lot, he, no. I, and I would understand Here's if he was thing, like, I don't know if I really want to no. meet with this guy, Here's Adam. the thing, though, Adam. He's going to be debate with Captain Tazaria. We just right. going to be here, like, hosted it. Yeah. Because if I wanted to, I'm bringing Captain Tazaria because, you know, he's a real intellectual dude. I can't take that from him. Right. But Cap is, too, when it comes to that world. Yeah. That's not my world. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I ain't got no, dog. I'm curious to hear his point of view because all of it may not be wrong. The biggest part of the Destiny Richard Spencer debate that I did not understand what the fuck they were talking about was when they got into the religion conversation. It was just so That's beyond anything I could comprehend. Where Captain Tazaria, he's a Hebrew Israelite. Right. That's where he kicks in. I'm going to be sitting there with my head spinning when Me they're and talking you both. about that shit. It's going to yeah. be educational on both sides. Yeah. I'm, I'm for real, because... For, it might be some key points he says that I might actually agree with. Okay. Just because he's a, a ex um, 
fucking Nazi right. don't mean he may not say some shit that's real. Right. Because I know Captain Cesario is going to say some shit that's real but that you might say, you know what? I Van Lathan is never going to let me live it down if I don't confront Richard Spencer this time around with some of his racist greatest hits. That's not, bro. I'm going to have to bring some of that no. to the table. Let Captain Cesario do that. He's going to do all the research. Well, that bro. is a good idea, yeah. Yeah, let, let them do their thing. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, we We're going to defeat racism together. I mean, it is what it is, man. But on the flip side, listen. It's, cause by next week, I want to make that announcement on that new business and that new division. We ain't going to mention it, but that you got a new division coming to uh, No Jumper. Well, give me something to write because I got to have the business manager take a look and we're going to talk it about to it. You. Right. We got a new division coming to No Jumper. I think uh, Adam going to let me run it, but it's going to be a great look for a lot of people who've been leading a lot of help. So I'm going to get you everything in paper. We're going to put it together so we can make the announcement and get it going. Yeah, we're starting a new business where we'll actually pull up to your crib and fade with you in the backyard. <laughs> Yo, some bullshit. But listen, tune in next time. You on motherfucking No Jumper with Adam 22 and WAC 100. Fuck that. Well, WAC 100 and Adam 22. Hey.